I'm coming to get you. You in the kitchen. In the goddamn refrigerator. I sure am hungry. Yo, 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 what's good, everybody? Welcome back to the Morning Dinner Podcast. It's your boy, Keem. And Chuck, what up? And we host the Morning Dinner Podcast, which is a podcast based out of Las Vegas where we sit down and interview and have conversations with creatives, entrepreneurs, and hustlers. And today's a very special episode, my friends. Today we got my friend, Fernando Gabriel. I was going to say Iglesias. <laughs> <laughs> Gabriel Iglesias. Fernando Gabriel uh, what's your last name, bro? <laughs> Not Trueba. No. Trueba. Here yes, we sir. go. Give the people a little intro, bro. Who you are and what you do. Um, hey guys, my name's uh, Fernando Trueba. Fernando. Fernando. Oh, that's a Fernando. <laughs> but in the states, in the states, I just introduced myself as Fernando. There you go. <laughs> um, I'm a photographer, videographer. Um, I'm a creative director. Um, and Twitch streamer based out of Dallas, Texas. Nice. Yeah, yeah. We uh, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, Fernando and I met in college. When we went to the art institute together. Was, yeah. And we uh, were doing audio, audio engineering, right? Audio? No, it was audio production. It was audio production. I don't. Production. I'm not a producer though, bro. That's the thing, you know. I know. So it's like, uh, why? Why do they call it audio production? It was. It was mostly like live sound stuff, studio. I was kind of. I was still kind of like pissed off at how like we didn't get to use the actual studio for recording until like the we last. Did. No, until oh, well, like yeah, the last, until the last, the last yeah, yeah, like yeah. six months of being there, bro. Yeah, and we we're there for six years. Well, <laughs> that, was, that, was, that, that, that was you, bro. Four years, my bad. Ooh, <laughs> that, years. that was I you, bro. Six years. I was there but for yeah. three. Yeah, but hey, man. So after we graduated in uh, 2013, what yeah. what happened? Why 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 did you leave Las Vegas? Well, what, after we graduated, I got a job in the, at the Cosmo. Um, I was a AV tech, AV technician. Um, so that's my background, doing mm. a lot of audiovisual production. Um uh mostly uh based around live sound and then uh after a year i just got tired of it i got it was long hours i was working like 80 to sometimes 100 hours a week like it was it was crazy i didn't have a social life and just for anybody listening what is an av person like what exactly do they do <laughs> um it, audio video production i mean it can range from doing like setting up screens setting up uh, audio setting up pa systems uh mostly for concerts mm -hmm. at the cosmos specifically but um, like it can be conferences, it can be meetings. It's all, it's all, all everything, mostly corporate, Got it. Mm. Yeah, corporate audio and corporate video at the, uh, at the casinos and stuff like that at the, yeah, the convention center is inside the Cosmo. It, yeah. it was pretty cool because, uh, there were, there were certain types that times that we were, um, we were giving like fire safety roles. Mm -hmm. So we were literally just there to make sure that there wasn't a fire at the concerts. Oh, so, damn. So you we, got paid for that? I got paid for just looking at <laughs> making sure that there was no fires because nice. there was a lot of pyrotechnics. No, what stuff. do you do if there's a fire? <laughs> <laughs> you literally, you yeah. literally have to call the fire department. The fire department. <laughs> That's it, bro. Like, they have their own fire department, though, right? Uh, uh, Cosmo? I don't know. Like it's like down and under? I, I've never like seen anything center? like that. Yeah, I swear. I think they have like two fire Oh, yeah, you know, they have the it close by, but not the actual, like just the casino. Yeah, they do. They do? Yeah. If, if I you never ever saw drove it. through Harmon. They have like these two fire trucks that always chill there, like a whole fire station. But it's for the whole area, right? Oh, I thought that was just for city center because they have their own air, uh, area code and shit. Wow. I they they're do? Balling like that, yeah. Like area code? Yeah. C city center was trying to be their own little like part of town. Really? Yeah, they ch they wanted to have like a shopping center. They wanted people to actually live there. I feel like City, and, like, <laughs> city Center was this big old hype thing, bro. Yeah. Was happening for the longest time where everybody was looking forward to like, yo, City Center is going to like change the way Las Vegas is looked at. Yeah. Right? And then like it, all the buildings went up and it was like, what's happening now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It it's was, definitely a lot fancier looking. Yeah. I the like the casinos. Aria. The Aria is part of City Center, right? Yeah. What, what are, what are the, all the casinos that are City it's, Center? It's Aria, uh, Aria, Aria. Van, uh, Aria. Mandarin, Vidara. The Mandarin. Oh, the Mandarin. The Vidara. 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 Yeah. Um, Cosmo. Cosmo isn't part of City Center. No, I think it's just those is three. Is it not? It, Cosmo Damn. is its own thing. Uh, and they took out that one building because they incorrectly built it wrong. Yeah. And then they couldn't, they Did, couldn't they, use it oh, <laughs> for so one? long. It was like the one... In right. the very front that you can see from the strip, I guess they built it incorrectly. So yeah. they literally couldn't use it and they Damn. had to like slowly demolish it. It's finally gone. It's finally gone? Yeah, it's yeah. finally gone. Can you, it imagine, such an eyesore. can you imagine building one of those casinos and then realizing Bro, like, that, that your building. interest in the facing the wrong street? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> that, that whole, um, I know what, what uh, building you're talking about and that building um, used to give the Cosmo a lot of problems because when it got really hot in the summer, um, just because of the way it was shaped, it would magnify the sun. Damn, and it would let it into it, the would, Cosmo. Well, you, don't you remember the Cosmo burned up? Like the Cosmo pool burned up a couple of years ago. Oh, oh yeah, really? I remember yeah. that. It was because of that. 
And like, it's just like the wow. reflection was so tough. Like they just literally started a fire. So what? Uh, and so that they, shit happens all around the world. So they built it incorrectly I, as in like it collapsed if people were actually in it or do you I, know I, don't, the, I don't know. I, don't know I just want to know why we're bro. talking so much about the cosmopolitan. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Let's go back. You're yeah, working 80 hour days. No, no, no. no. So <laughs> I, I know you primarily as like an audio engineer, bro. Yeah. You know, cause we did a lot of audio classes together. We're working on, you know, uh, mixing, uh, audio for video and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you get into the, the spectrum of like photography and video and all that stuff? Um, it was mostly cause of my audio projects. Like I remember having, uh, those classes with Nick. You remember Nick Hotchkiss? Yeah. Yeah. He was, he was one of the best. I think he's, he's, he's studio engineering like for, he works at, uh, I think, uh, uh, what's, what's that studio called? Odds on? Odds on. Yeah. It's yeah. not called odds on no more. It's not. Nah, oh. they changed it. I was recently there, but I forgot what the new name of it is. Yeah. Well, he was, he was our, our professor. Um, and I, I, I tend to be an overachiever sometimes, especially with schoolwork. And I was like, I, I'm not going to turn in just, uh, I remember we had a, a sound design uh, project where you had to come up with a song just by, you know, making sounds with like hitting a table or closing and opening an oven door or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, and I literally said like, I'm not just going to turn in an audio and like not explain how I did these sounds. So I literally rented a, a 7D mm -hmm. and I just filmed myself like actually recording the sounds. Um, and that's just, I started learning. I had to learn. Mm -hmm. like, that's just, I just picked up the camera and started learning. Nice. What was a seven seven D? Seven D. Wait, so you, you so you were recording videos of yourself making the sounds for your audio project? Kind of like a BTS, and mm -hmm. I would turn that in just to get a plus. You had a higher lot of, grade. Plus, if you weren't if you took the same classes as I did, you had a lot of like classes where they forced you to learn video, right? Yeah. Like not so much like the intense depth of it, but like more like just how you hit the record button, yeah. how you taking the files to you know what was it uh avid media composer yeah and you chop it up and things like that yeah, yeah it was it was more based around video editing for sure yeah but yeah i, th I think the first experience that i had with you with video was when we did that 48 hour film project dude to talk about that yeah. experience real quick, wait, bro. Wait, wait, chuck as well <laughs> yeah, all three of us were in there bro yeah and, and patrick crazy. shout out to patrick shout out to patrick um no shout outs to patrick <laughs> <laughs> um yeah man that that whole ordeal was intense but it was definitely like a, a huge huge learning uh, lesson. It was it was insane. What is a forty eight hour film project? A forty eight film project is literally you team up with um, four to five friends. Um, a lot of production, small production companies just get together. It's like it's a good practice, um, mm -hmm. but it's basically you're giving a genre, a film genre, and you have to create a film in forty eight hours, a short film. Um, but they give you certain uh, rules to follow, so you need to you know, like ours, it, we had to include a picture, or was it a painting? Something. It, Something like that, right? I think we had to include the a painting. painting. Yeah. Had to say a certain word. <coughs> we had to say characters. a certain word. Uh, the theme. The theme. Uh, but yeah, that whole thing was insane, especially because I was the main actor. <laughs> that shit was. <laughs> That's right. You were. Times. Yeah. Yo, we're going to link that video. Everybody was flaking. We're going to link that video, bro. Yeah. In the description. That was, uh, yeah. yeah. It was, it was, <laughs> it was a learning cool. experience for sure. It shows you that the best way to learn anything is 100% <laughs> like. Just doing it. Just, just doing, doing it. it. Yeah, and I'm going to re-explain it because you did a horrible job trying to, <laughs> trying to explain what the 48 hour film Jeez. project is an event where photographers, videographers, actors, models, whatever, they get together, they make a group, and then they give you a genre, uh, an item, a line, a phrase, or whatever for a film that you have to produce. You have to write, you have to script it, write it, cast it, produce it, edit it, all within 48 hours. And you it starts Friday at 7 p.m. And you have to have it turned in by Sunday, 7 p.m. Yeah. So we didn't sleep. I mean, we I, we did we did sleep. We slept like three or four hours. Well, we like, did. We, we rotated. We rotated. You're yeah, right. People took a nap and then other people were editing. Other people were writing, scripting. Like, you it want was to change insane. that camera angle, bro? What's up? Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I was uh, so... so interested but what are you saying what, what, what was your what was your uh your favorite part about that whole thing that whole thing yeah. it was honestly just like it, it enables for collaboration and just being creative like it really challenges to be creative with the tools are you giving you know what the rules are you giving what tools did we have bro we just had our own cameras t2i's <laughs> yeah remember we we set up shop in our in my apartment my small small my small ass apartment <laughs> and uh um yeah i just brought your laptop no you brought your imac your huge as imac did i yeah yeah i bring my computer yeah, I, have, too. I, have, I have the uh behind the scenes video i yeah. watch it every so often just to crack up oh damn you gotta okay you gotta send me that too then yeah you, no you remember we posted it and then you were like yeah we had to take it down because your dad told you like yeah that doesn't if you're trying to start a company that doesn't look uh, professional at all because we were saying all kinds of 
ignorant stuff. Yeah, that's true. Wait, that's for what? True. That's the behind true. the scenes. For the behind the scenes, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. we were super ignorant. Because we were just true. shooting the shit a lot. But yeah. yeah. But that was the time when we were trying to start up Indie Flare. Yeah. Oh, talk about that real and quick. Well, what, what, what is that? What is that real quick, man? Um, so for everybody watching, uh, Keen, myself, Chuck, and Patrick. Patrick was getting on to it as well. Yeah. Uh, we started a, we were start, trying to start a video production company. We actually shot a couple of videos, um, mostly music videos, but we also did a couple of commercials. Yeah. Um, but we were trying to start our own video production company, basically, like be our own bosses. And it yeah. didn't work out. And then it failed because <laughs> well, Fernando moved them. No, hold yeah. on. Uh, hold on. It, <laughs> it failed because I told, I kept telling you we should, we should get an L- LLC. We should make this like as legit as possible. And we were yeah. like, no, bro, we don't need that shit. We like, need money first, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we need gigs first. We need gigs first. Uh, which, that was fair. That was fair. But yeah, I mean, we've been working. We've been known. Each, we've been known. We've known each other for the longest time. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. remember that, that one wedding we did, bro? Uh, yeah. I won't say names, but yeah. They're your no, your they're, friend. They're no longer together. <laughs> no, no, no. Which, which one? No, no, no. You did. Are you talking about my the last one we did? Oh, the no. one at the golf course? The first one, yeah. yeah, yeah. The golf yeah, course yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. a really nice the, wedding, though. That was a really nice wedding. They're no longer yeah. together. Yeah. I, lo- <laughs> I went on the I went on the Indie Flare page to see the tagged <laughs> people because it was a while ago. Yeah. And then she's like with the complete new guy. She already got a kid with everything. <laughs> really? But yeah, it's crazy, man. Oh, man. It just sad. goes to show you, though, man. Weddings out here, man. People get married at like 17, 18, 20. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, marriage don't mean everything. <sighs> but that's a good thing Sadly. for us, you know. Get Why more work. That? That's true. Get up, up again. <laughs> you, get double, you get booked twice for the same girl. Bro, yeah, I literally, you should start saying to, you know, if you get a divorce on your second wedding, I'll we get a, a discount. Discount. Yeah. 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 discount it. Yo, yeah. that's kind of sad. That's kind of a good marketing. Nah, like send us your divorce papers and uh, we'll hook you up on your yeah. next wedding. Damn. You know, we'll throw you a free engagement shoot. Dude, that's Damn. a good PR. It's good PR right there. Yeah. All right, so after, <laughs> after I have a little cough, bro. I don't know. I think I'm getting sick. Um, yeah, Keep don't take care of himself. But uh, yeah, it's all good, man. Um, <laughs> after after because you ended up leaving Vegas in 2014. I left the Vegas, year after yeah. you graduated. Where, where where did you go and what was your path for that? After um, that? well, yeah, after working uh, at the Cosmo. <laughs> that was that was <laughs> you for sure you don't want to drink something? Yeah, I'm good, some man. I'll, I'll I'll do it after. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Yeah, but you gonna make the podcast sound terrible. Good, yeah. Keep going. All right. Um, after after just working there, man, I got I got tired because you know, like I said, I was being overworked. Um, it was it was a great learning experience. You know, I got to work with great artists. Um, I worked for Bruno Mars. Uh, just he had a residency at the Cosmo. Um, it's just you know working around big shows. Um, but at the end of the day, like that really drained me. Um, I was in. I didn't have a good social life. Um, I developed a little bit of like the depression, uh, anxiety, all that stuff. And I was like, you know what? I need to make a change. So I basically sold all my stuff and I started my own company, moved back home with my parents. They were like, for sure, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll sponsor you for like a year, year and a half. And, you know, you might, while you kill, kick this off. Um, so, uh, moved back home to Mexico. I grew up in Mexico, by the way. Um, and I worked there by myself. I freelanced for a year. What to- part of Mexico? I grew up in uh, what used to be a small town, not to, not a big ass city, um, Ciudad Juarez, Chihuahua, Mexico. Mm-hmm. So it was right on the border with yep. uh, El Paso, Texas. Um, and I was like, it's a it's a huge huge city, like two million people live there almost. Um, but yeah, I was doing weddings nonstop for a whole year out there. Oh wow! Yeah, it was it was really good. It, I I, I uh, built up, built up a name for myself um, doing basically wedding videos what was your production company called it was just my name oh okay i was kind of like trying to do that uh what's that big um wedding adam video producer adam rob adams rob Rob adams Adams. i was trying to do something like him yeah he's crazy he's he's his own brand yeah he's crazy i was trying to do that he's charging a lot of money for those how much is he charging like thirty thousand? nah no ray roman does is that the guy ray roman that's who i was thinking about rob adam i like i was talking to him and he uh he charged anywhere between five to ten grand for the video that's just if it's just him and like one or two other people yeah. shooting it, and it's like a one day event. Uh, but I know uh, Ray Roman. He, I think the most expensive wedding he's done is fifty grand for just a video. Fifty grand. I for sure turn off your phone though. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Bitcoin dropped. I got a yeah. notification. <laughs> Goodbye. You're using that episode of Silicon Valley. 
Do you watch the Silicon Valley? No. no? I was seen the episode <laughs> where he starts choking on the smoke and he can't stop coughing, bro. You remember that? No. We take uh, TJ Miller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's basically up. like this. Yeah, floor, right? like, yeah, he can't stop coughing, bro. Yeah. He's almost dying. He's trying to like, get a point across. Yeah, yeah. They, they overdo it. Yeah. I hate that shit. But that's just so funny. There was a new episode uh, in, the, in the last season where they start introducing Bitcoin and the, the guy's got, got his notification set up every time Every time the Bitcoin goes down. It goes... Or do 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 and then like, yeah, it's pretty cool. Because <laughs> they mentioned Bitcoin. <laughs> that went nowhere. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, I remember you were out there, man. Wait, so you were in Mexico shooting those weddings? I was mostly in Mexico and Texas. Because you live in Dallas now, right? I live in Dallas currently. How yeah. far is Dallas from the border? Uh, uh Around nine hours driving. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Any, anywhere between, well, it depends which border you want to go to. Texas like, is huge, border. bro. Texas, yeah. Texas, yeah, it, it's so big. Texas used to be its own country. Yo, it kind of still is. <laughs> oh, yeah, come on. The, yeah. Isn't it like the Republic of Texas right now? Eight, no, that, no. That was back in the day before it became a state. Oh, okay. But they're like two steps away from becoming the Republic again, right? Uh, I don't I don't know that whole Do you follow those politics? politics? Yeah. No? I think California is trying to secede for the longest time now. I don't know how that's going to work out. You have two different states they, They're They're rich enough. I mean, they're, they're, they're basically making more than... Like half of the pop, like half of the countries around the world. Yeah. So will they have their, their GDP like, is their insane. own borders or some shit? Yeah. I mean, they were trying to. Country? They were trying to. I mean, that's cool. Like whatever. I mean, I'll just go through. Yeah. I think yeah. Wait. Yeah. So 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 you went back to you said El Paso. Uh, I well, I, I lived in Juarez for a year. Um, <clears> but like <throat> people have a misconception of the border. They think like it's it's so hard to cross. But literally, people. Well, <laughs> no, this fool's <laughs> elbowing the fucking bike. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "My bad, my <laughs> bad. Go ahead." Um, yeah. People, people have this misconception that the border, like border life, is is like very non. It, it it basically it's two communities that just live together so so well. Like people cross, people live in Mexico and cross to El Paso all the time to work. It's like it's it's a it's a big uh, it's the largest uh, binational uh, conglomerate of cities in the world. Those what, are big words. It basically means that it's the, one of the two biggest cities that live really close by. Oh, that in different countries. Different countries, yeah. Got it. There's just a lot of money going there. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, you import see any, and export. You see any like, strange activity down there? I love how you said it, that accent. Yeah. <laughs> strange activity strange acti- down there. Remember that Friday movie? It was the next Friday. The 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 what's it her? Is it Asian lady or she was like a Hispanic lady? There's a lot of strange activity. Oh, I don't remember that. Going on no, there. I don't remember, I remember no. that from the front. All right, well, yeah. moving on. We'll put the clip uh. in. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, yeah, for sure. Like um, Juarez had a very bad uh, rep back in like 2008 um, because there was obviously like a lot of, uh, there was a, a cartel war going on. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there was just two cartels trying to fight for the whole plaza. That's how they call it, the plaza, mm-hmm. which just means their territory. Um, so there was a lot of like, killings like there was an average between like 10 to 15 killings a day like people getting murdered um and that was like definitely that was my high school years um mm-hmm. and i think the, the closest that i've ever gotten to anything crazy happening to me um was uh, i used to be in a band in high school and we, we played at this uh restaurant well it was more like a bar restaurant and we played and we were like all right you know we're just gonna go drop off our instruments and then come back and just chill um we weren't drinking because we were underage uh and then uh we as soon as we left like we get a call five minutes later from the owner and he's like hey guys like don't come back like there's just been like a a shooting outside a drive-by like they just killed like this very very corrupt politician and like a bunch of stray bullets came into the restaurant and like almost hit me so just don't come back like we're close for the day damn like that shit was normal like that 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 kind of stuff happened all day every day like there was just no like, they wouldn't hide it, you know. Yeah. It's not like in Vegas, like in the mafia days, where they just kill at nine and just like got rid of the bodies, yeah. like on the lot down low. Mm-hmm. Back in the day, and well, not back in the day, but like in two thousand eight, two thousand nine, it was just plain, you know, daylight. That's how cartel kind of shows their power too. Just like yo, yeah, we're gonna do it in broad daylight. Like there's no, yeah, they don't that's care. It's crazy. They're, yeah, they're, like, that's it's a whole world that I would never want to be part of. No. It's just insane. Not it's even crazy. for a certain amount of money. No. Not even for like my happiness. Fernando. My happiness is not worth like my peace of mind is is not worth. Fernando, we'll give you ten billion dollars <laughs> for one year of your time. What do and I have afterwards? Yeah, see. just watch the door, bro. <laughs> Just watch the door. That's like the worst part, bro. Yeah. Just watch That's the door. That's where SWAT comes in. Yeah, exactly, bro. You're the first one to get one shot. One year. One year. 
<laughs> no, because you don't. And you, then you can never escape that life. And then afterwards, you get all the women you want. No, there's 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 the saying that you know once you join that life that you know the cartel. Yeah, well, if you look at any movie, really, there's only any, one way to like get out of the business and kill yourself. It's, yeah, it's by death. being killed. If you watch, <clears throat> if you watch any documentary on Netflix or anything, any stories related to like the cartels, bro, it's always like you know people. Some, someone always tries to make a come up and then leave. It doesn't work that way. There's there is no out of that. Yeah, you know, it's, it's yeah. So one killed. thing, like, how how did the cartel subside from that area? Like, you know what I mean? Well, there was there was a huge um, like joint effort from uh, the U.S. government. They actually came down and um, trained a lot of the police force because the police force down in in Mexico is very corrupt. Um, but they just came down and were like, "Hey, man, like, we can't be having this. Like, it's actually affecting our economy as well." I mean, there's, there's people all- are afraid. There's people, are, there. well, there's people just, but even like the U.S., like a lot of stuff just, it, it's, it's, it's a border forth, town. Yeah. yeah. Back and forth. Like a lot of stuff that, you know, jeans, clothing, food is made down yeah. in Mexico and it's imported. Like it, it just became a problem for both, both cities. So it was like, you know what? We gotta, we gotta calm this down. So, but now it's, it's a whole different city now. There's a lot of um, money being invested now. That's type. It's a whole completely different city now. So you think it's definitely doing better for sure? For sure. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot more opportunity now. I got to ask you, how, how, how are the weddings down there? Were there like a lot of weddings that you could book or was it? Oh yeah. Yeah. There's Mexicans, a lot. Mexicans, Mexicans, Mexicans. Mexicans. <laughs> Mexicans. <laughs> Mexicans. <laughs> Mexicans. <laughs> Mexicans be getting married, bro. Yeah. They throw big ass parties. <laughs> yeah. They, they be getting married, bro. Yeah. What, <laughs> yeah. What, what was the, 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 the best wedding you ever shot? Like, what was the most one that you were like, whoa, this is legit? Like, uh, um, it definitely had to be one that I shot at a golf course. Like, they, they just rented out the whole golf course, and it was in the middle of the, like, the whole golf course. It was, it was actually a cartel wedding? It was probably. Oh, yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, it wasn't, no. Um, but yeah, it was probably that. Nice. I, I love Mexican weddings, bro. Like, they're, they're so. So fun. eventful. I would like so to. Eventful. I would like to do like a <clears throat> straight up Mexican one where they have like the what's it called the, the horses, the charro, yeah, like the old like the old traditional like vest that's yeah. like, like a vaquero, you know what I mean, like a cowboy, like Mexican cowboy. Is that where they shoot yeah. the guns and all that? Um, or is yeah, that not a? I don't know. I've never been. I to thought one. that was usually how. Do it you is. guys watch too many movies? <laughs> <laughs> too many warfare movies? No, they do that. They do that in Russia and stuff. Like that's like a normal thing. It is. Like they just shoot their guns in the air. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was I was just in Turkey for a wedding. Or Turkey, or might have been Turkey. <laughs> you were you were in Turkey for a wedding. I was in Turkey for like a wedding recently. Re- like yeah, August. Oh damn, August September. Were you yeah. shooting I was, it or were you just? No, a- I was a groomsman. Oh, well, how did that happen? A uh, groomsman? Yeah, yeah. You know anybody in Turkey? I know I know people who got married to <coughs> Turkish people. Mm, okay. Yeah. Oh, so a buddy of mine. They nice. don't live yeah. out there. They're just doing it. Oh, okay. The owner of Fairlight Studios. Okay. And you met Shout Fairlight out. Studios when you went to London or? Yeah. So oh, let's talk about that real quick. Yeah. So, so after you, you left Vegas to pursue your own career as an independent, uh, you know, video content creator, mm-hmm. uh, back in, uh, Juarez, yeah. you decided to go back to school, uh, I, in, yeah. in 2015, uh, in 2015. Yeah. I okay. went back to school. Uh, I went to get my master's degree, um, in advertising. Mm-hmm. So I did that. Um, and I, Luckily, got accepted to go to study uh, at Kingston University in London. Um, so yeah, I I moved to London in 2015. Um, I studied advertising and the creative economy, so it was like um, a little bit of marketing, a little bit of entrepreneurship, but based around like the creative industries. Uh huh. So what kind um, of stuff did they have you doing? Like, was it just like creating marketing packages and no, concept ideas for? Uh, well, we did have those classes, but it was basically like. It was, it was mostly based around entrepreneurship and like design thinking. Yeah. Um, so design thinking is about like empathy towards your customer, customer centricity, like really understanding, um, what, what the need is in the market. Like, for example, you go and study, you know, you know, people are really complaining about how, for example, booking weddings, um, you know, like it's a whole ordeal trying to like communicate between the, the client and yourself or like whenever you get a, um, you get uh, contacted by a brand who wants to like shoot a commercial, but they're like, we don't have an idea. Let's, you know, let's work together. Like we would, we would come up with ideas to solve those type of problems. So for example, a lot of my friends come came up with ideas to um, like better reuse clothing. Like it's just not being used. Like come up with apps where people could sell their old clothing, like old clothes and like keep reusing 
yeah. clothing. Um, so that would help a lot of designers and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, no, I studied all that. Um, and we actually, part of the whole course was coming up with our own idea and sell it. So we had our own <coughs> company. We had our own company as well, um, me and my buddy. Uh, and we, were, we created this, this product called the uh, Man Apron. Oh, okay. Which is basically, uh, it was an apron that you put around your around your neck. Mm-hmm. And you would you could clip it onto the mirror. So anytime you shaved, it caught it like, it caught all the hair. So it reduced <laughs> cleaning time. That's kind of tight. Yeah. So we had to come up with like products like that. You know. Okay. Find a, a problem and try and solve it. Oh, nice. Solving it. So, so yeah. uh, how, that was out in London, right? That was in London. Yeah. How different? How, how different is the UK from from the United States? It's really fucking different, right? Yeah. Yeah. How? In what way? Um, because I heard that they have like strict gun control laws and yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. What, what was your experience? But more about the culture and the people. The I, it's it's weird. Like we definitely the U.S. does definitely share a lot of uh, like cultural aspects to the U.K. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think like the main differences is just I think the people. Uh, the humor out there is just so fucking dry. Like it's it's not the same type of humor that you see in a lot of American television. Yeah, it's a lot more cutthroat and like straight to the point or like completely dry. Well, The Office, you know, The Office was yeah. made, yeah. but it started out yeah. in the UK. Mm-hmm. Like the whole. So idea. The Office has that kind of, or the UK yeah. has that kind of uh, humor, like the dry kind of like, <sighs> yeah, no laugh track. It's just like <laughs> exactly, because the other yeah. thing is too. I, I've known a few people from like France. Yeah, and like they did not get my humor. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like he's like, "What's so funny?" Yeah. You know what I mean? I was like, uh, <clears throat> I had to explain the whole joke to him. Yeah. Well, yeah. the French, he the French laugh. are weird. Yeah. The dude, I, I mean, I don't mean to generalize, but like, piece of shit. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Wanna, I don't want to say weird, weird. Weird is a tough. Is a tough word. I, I'd say they just are they stern. I guess, or they just have a different way of. It's just a different way of seeing life. Shout out to the French. Like shout out to the amazing French. Amazing yeah, yeah. Shout out to Daft Punk. Shout out Terrible to Justice. allies, but yeah. shout out to them. Shout out to BreakBot. <laughs> shout out allies. to Busy P and that bangers. Yeah. I, said, yeah. I said terrible allies, but <laughs> shout out to them. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about, bro? They helped us out in the American Revolution. We're ignorant here. It was a bit, y'all. It was a bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you were out there doing, uh, getting your master's degree. Getting my master's how, degree. How long, how long were you out there for? I was out there for a year and a half. That's a all year. it takes for a master's? A year, yeah. Well, yeah. there's like, depending on the master's, like the course that you're taking. What? Are we, oh, okay. Got it. <laughs> now let me ask you this: What about tuition? What about, <laughs> stop laughing, bro. I got a little bit of a cough. <laughs> I don't, How about tuition, like in versus the U.S.? Would you say it's it's better or worse? It's definitely cheaper out there. Really? Yeah. But uh, the U.K. is one of the only European countries where they don't have um, socialized education. Uh, What's that mean? Uh, like free education oh, okay. you know everybody pays in through taxes and mm-hmm. i know germany has a socialized education where people can go to college for free um, but they do have higher taxes stuff like that oh, okay mm-hmm. yeah well but i think another bigger the biggest differences that i i like about the uk <laughs> i'm probably gonna get controversial um is socialized health care universal health care they have it out there i actually got a um I went. I got a surgery out in the UK for free. What? Yeah. I, like, so socialized healthcare is basically free healthcare for everybody. That's crazy. Yeah. Everybody just pays in through their taxes. Really? Yeah. It's 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 definitely it's a lot more. Um, it it just takes away the burden of you know you break your arm and you like ten thousand dollars in debt. Yeah. It definitely helps a lot with like social mobility and stuff like that. Do you, um, do you, do you think that option is better than the way we have it set up here in the U.S. Or do you think they're just different? I think it's, just it's, different. it's a different, you got to think of it in terms of like the size of the population. Yeah. Like over there, is, it's, it's, it's an island. It's a small country. Over here, we just have, it's, it, it can definitely sustain itself out in the U.S., but I feel like Americans are a lot more independent. They don't like being dependent of the government. It's just cultural. I think yeah. it's just a cultural thing. Man, mm-hmm. I'd love free healthcare. God damn. Uh, it's definitely, yeah, it helps, <laughs> man. But then again, like you pay a lot more in taxes. Yeah. Wait, so how much do you pay in taxes out there, like versus the U.S.? Because I know, it's, like, the U.S., like, you know, if you work a job, you, whatever they take out with, the, like, Medicare, um, taxes, regular state taxes, or whatever, it's so usually around 30%, right? I don't know. I, I, you don't know what it is out there? I, I don't know. I just know you pay a lot more. Were you were you working out there or were you just going to school? I was working. No, I was I was both working and going to school. I had to get a student visa. Okay, um, oh, I was going to ask you what the process was like to actually go over there. Yeah, because you're it. It was a whole Mexican. process. 
I'm I'm American, bro. Okay, but you're Mexican than me, bro. I'm Mexican American. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Let's go no, through but, the whole process. <laughs> yeah, because you were living in uh, Juarez, right? Yeah. So you have dual citizenship. I, I have dual citizenship. Okay, but then how was the process of going to London? Like, what, what did you have to do? Um. So I'm I'm, I'm full blown American. I, I just grew up in Mexico. So I just want to clarify for the uh, record. Like, yeah, I, before anybody calls eyes on me, <laughs> like check him. Uh, yeah. Um, no, no. The the whole process of it was you basically have to get accepted to a course. Um, then the the school sends out like a letter of you know certifying that you're actually going to school. Um, and once you get that, you apply for a visa. Mm. And then you apply for a student visa, and then it gets and how long does that visa out. last for? Uh, it lasts uh, however long your course is, and then they usually give you like six to a year uh, after? after you graduate. Oh, yeah. that's so right. So you can work, or you can you know extend your visa. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I was out there working, but I could only work if I was studying full time. I could only work uh, part time, so I was just doing like gigs here and there, shooting mm. a couple of stuff. Nice. And then once I graduated, I I basically was in charge of all the video content for the university. So I was doing all their like social media stuff, social content, Damn social stuff. media content. Basically. Yeah. I had asked you before the podcast started, like what, uh, what, what kind of like, you know, ex- unique experiences you had out there. You told me something about ghost. Ghost. ghost? What? <laughs> they have Are a there ghost ghosts? out there. They have a what? In London. Like London is, is it's an, it's a very old city. Very old. Very old. How old like 5,000. Like years? it's older than the United. You, know, you say 5,000 years. Yeah. I mean, it, really? it's, it's, no. it's, it's pretty old. <laughs> like it was, it was, it was, it was founded by the Romans. It was, it's a very, very old city. Um, it was founded nice. by the, by the Romans and then it was conquered by, like, it, it's just, it's been through a lot. Yeah. Um, but well, you can tell, and the, especially in the photos that you uploaded, mm-hmm. you can see like the architecture of the buildings. I they love look the like old. Oh yeah. So much. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. And like, there's buildings out there that are older than the whole country of the United States. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. it's insane. Like you're walking on history. It's just, it's, it's insane. But like ghost stories, it's mostly like, you know, they take you along like a, a bus, a double decker bus, and they just show you like, oh yeah, this is where, you know, Jack the Ripper killed like 20 women and stuff like that. Like it's. Oh, I heard about insane. that. I wanted to go on that, bro. It's a whole trip, like a whole little thing that they take you through. And they take you through a building too, right? I never took it. So I oh, don't no? Know. Oh, no. Okay. But I know that it, like ghost, the, like ghost stories and like all that culture of, you know, hauntings and yeah haunted houses did you ever experience any hauntings when you're out there bro not really man did you see any werewolves in london no i did see some hairy people though <laughs> straight up you're hairy. pretty hairy bro yeah, yeah. Me, man. It was, yeah i was it's like probably hey, yourself uh, in the mirror yeah. bro. <laughs> <laughs> did you feel like you were the only mexican-american there no bro it's, it's such a it's such a universal city that so is it a melting pot it is it's it's uh, people from okay. all around the world live in london it's yeah. crazy it's like it's insane how many people you meet from mexico there's a lot of people from venezuela uh why so uh because of the you, you know what's happened in venezuela right like there's a whole issue with you know poverty the, and like their, their, their inflation is yeah. insane mm-hmm. so a lot of people uh, uh immigrated to the uk as political um what do you call them asylum se- asylum yeah. seekers so there's a lot of venezuelans down the, out there um they're but called what? Asylum what? Asi- like, just asylum seekers. Like Oh, asylum seekers. Yeah. Okay. They're just like... I they, couldn't hear they you because your Mexican accent. They can't live. <laughs> they can't live. Asylum in, seekers? In, <laughs> <laughs> your Mexican accent. You damn Mexican. <laughs> I'm Mexican too. I can say that, guys. Yeah, sure. Okay. Sorry, I'm just mean to cut you off. You say yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> I don't even know if you're Mexican, bro. Damn, I am. Oh. I don't know. Pretty, I'm, well... Are you fluent in Spanish? Uh well the first of all it is crazy bro because Spanish was my first language yeah I I grew up because I was born in East LA but then literally like a couple weeks after I was born my whole family moved down to Baja Cali yeah so we were like in like the TJ area like within an hour of it yeah <clears throat> I grew up there till about I was about six and then we moved to Vegas because mm. my uncle we have uncles here and everything uh but Spanish was my first language and then I started learning Spanish or English and now I can like my Spanish is kind of broken you know. But yeah, but yeah, I, I still know. I still speak a little bit of Spanish, bro. Yeah, I can get by for sure. Yeah. my mom laughs at me because I make I say some words sometimes, and uh, they're like a little bit off. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they don't mean what what they mean. Yeah, like I, I'll I'll say like or I'll, I'll try to ask her like what's how do you say recipe in Spanish like a recipe, and I'll just mess around with her like oh recipio, <laughs> <laughs> you know like <laughs> yeah, but you know to, you know other than that. I'm pretty good with you know speaking Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you are Mexican. I can get back. I can go to Mexico. <laughs> the only thing is though, I can't go to Cuba or like, you know what I mean, <laughs> like Salvador. those. That's a where, or yeah, where they have that accent, bro. Yeah, 
I go get, I go get my hair cut. Chico. I go get my so, hair cut at this place down the street. Yeah. And it, I think it's all Cubans, bro. But the way they talk, it's almost like their jaws like, like hanging, bro. Like you yeah. know that like you can't. They don't enunciate very well. Yeah, no. And they speak really fast. Yeah, they just join like can join words with each other like. Yeah, it's just, it's insane. It sounds it's like so they're fast. rapping, and then they they. they they dance pretty good though. They got some good music. <laughs> yeah, because they're all, they're cutting your hair and they're always like moving around. <laughs> well, that's yeah. that's dangerous, bro. Yeah, <laughs> cutting your hair, and moving around. That's why I haven't gone in a while. <laughs> after they cut my hair, you off. actually have a scar, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's Anyways, insane, bro. Yeah. yeah. So wait, so you were out there in London. You were studying, uh, getting your business, or getting your masters in business, or masters in advertising. Advertising. Um, and, the and then, uh, how did you meet this? Because you're wearing this Fairlight. T-shirt shout studios. To, yeah, shout out to Fairlight Studios. Um, and congrats yeah. as well for the wedding. Yeah, congrats to Luke. Um, yeah, I basically met Luke, uh, Luke Ducker out there. We studied the same course. Um, and um, yeah, he he owns a, a recording studio out in London with his uh, uh, two but two brothers, two brothers, brothers, <laughs> two, yeah, brothers. We all, two nice. brothers. I'm sorry, man. I have a speech impediment. <laughs> hey, it's okay. He's uh, a Mexican. <laughs> um, he has a recording studio out there with his uh, two of his brothers, and uh, he, he's basically also a, a filmmaker. Um, and we just kind of like, you know, we started kicking in, and we're like, yeah, man, like we can definitely work together. And I helped him out with a bunch of shoots, and we just basically collaborated on a bunch mm. of stuff. But now they they are a, like full on recording studio. I think they're doing some stuff for uh, the BBC, which is like a big. Uh, oh, software. nice. Yeah. Wait, so would, would you have stayed out there in London if you could have gone past the six month to a year visa? Yeah, definitely. It, I was yeah. trying to, but it, it's wait. So, but you you can like once you graduate, you have to move back to the to to the U.S. or can you apply to stay the longer? You can apply. You can apply. There's there's a lot of different ways you can extend your visa. You can get a. Does it cost a lot? Uh, it costs, but um, it's you know it's in the thousands region, like a thousand a thousand pounds. They're, Just to apply. What if you don't get accepted? You just you're out of luck. What? Yeah. But I mean, there's different ways you can stay out there. You know, I know a lot of people from Taiwan who stayed in the UK, um, and they apply for a entrepreneurship visa. Yeah. Which is basically as long as you have your uh, your business out there and you're making money, a yeah. certain amount of money, you you can stay out there. Are you gonna make they, a certain amount? Yeah, but but they, they really they have a lot of programs like they really encourage people to be entrepreneurs and and yeah. start their own businesses and like London is such a, a big hub for uh, small businesses and startups. Like, it's insane. Everybody is I'm, working at startups. It's fucking smart, though. I mean, New York, finally, I think they're doing that now. And I think we talked about this on the last podcast. But yeah. New York is giving free college. Really? But the thing is, you have to do the four years. And then after, I think you have to stay there for like two two yeah. years. Like, you can't leave the state. Wow. But you, th- you that's smart to build the somehow. economy. Yeah. I was like, that's genius. Yeah, every, you get taxes in. Every state should do that. Like, it's just, it makes sense. It just, it, it boosts the economy. Yeah. Like, it's just so cool. <clears throat> if every, more people spending money, the better the economy is. just yeah. how the game works. Have you, know? you guys heard of this uh, guy who's running for president for 2020? Andrew Yang? No? No. You, as soon as I landed, you told me about him, but I don't yeah. know. I've never heard yeah. about him. He's, uh, <clears throat> he's, just, I th- I don't know exactly what he is. He's Asian, but I don't know what 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 ethnicity exactly. But he's running for president in twenty twenty, and he wants to give every every citizen in the United States a one thousand dollar a month like minimum wage, basically mm. like that kind of like people how some people get like met like what was it called like free free. What are you talking about? Food benefits, stats? yeah, like benefits, like things welfare? like that. Welfare, yeah, kind of like welfare. He wants to give everybody a thousand dollar minimum. Yeah, universal Anything, income. Universal income, yeah. yeah every income. single person. Every single person. So even if you have hella money. Even if you have hella money. Yeah, and they they they've done that. They tried that in Finland. Did it work? They, uh, I don't know. Do you think it's because some people are gonna abuse it? It's always that thing. Like it's, this is the well, no, because the, the thing is like his philosophy behind it is that no. Hard working American is going to be like, oh, a thousand dollars. Oh, I can chill. I can quit my job now. You know yeah. what I mean? Because a thousand dollars, you can't live off of a thousand dollars. A month, right? A month. Yeah. A month. Yeah. You can't true. live. You can't live off of it. Like it's not enough. So it's like. But it motivates but he, you. But it will motivate you to start a business, to start a new entrepreneurship, you know, like to kind of like put money back into the economy Yeah. because now you'll have that cushion of like, okay, now I can take risks. And at the, know? yeah, and at the basis of it is, is just think about oh, it from, everybody puts it into crypto. <laughs> <laughs> like at the basis do. of it, like it's, it's, a, it's a good, I mean, the, the end goal is good. Like they're trying to get people off the streets. You know, if you're homeless, like how, how can you get a job if you don't have an address, mm-hmm. you know, so that, that, that basic income is trying to, you know, 
get rid of the the whole cycle of poverty, you know, that people find themselves in and they can't really lift themselves out of. Um, I think it's a good idea. I think that no, I think if it's, it's implemented correctly, de- definitely people can, can benefit from it a lot. I, th- I would much prefer my income, like my tax dollars go to lifting up the community, you know, mm-hmm, 100%. like social and mobility. actually seeing the tax dollars like go somewhere exactly. you know, instead of being held. Cause I went to one of those board meetings here. They have so much money just chilling from the city. Yeah. It's hey, like 6 billion real quick. They're like, we have 6 billions and I think it was 6 billion. I might be lying, but I went and they were like, yeah, we have 6 billion in reserve. I was like, damn, bro. Money. Yeah. <laughs> put it in the city. schools. Yeah. <laughs> put that education up, you know, exactly. Help the homeless. Like, yeah. what, what exactly is Brexit? Cause Brexit? I heard about it a while ago. Oh, shit, man. Were, were you there when that was happening? What was I, it? I was out of the country. I was actually in Denmark. I was traveling, um, to Copenhagen. I was just mm. chilling. Are you traveling a lot down there? Yeah. Was, yeah, man. Traveling in Europe is so cheap. Like, really? Yeah. Like I, I remember I, I book a ticket to, uh, to go to Germany, 50 bucks. Plane? What? Yeah, it's a plane. Mm. I mean, no it was, it was way. like a budget airline, but it was, you know, it was yeah, like it a two matter. hour, tr- it was a two hour flight. What, so do, what do you mean my budget airline? Like they. Like spirit, like spirit out here. Spirit airlines. Oh, it's a budget airline. Somewhat. What's the difference between a regular airline and a budget oh, one? They, they, they basically, they don't have, what, what do you mean? Like, like they don't have first class. Like, hold on. Cause the only thing I'm, I'm thinking of like when you fly, you were either going to crash or not crash. <laughs> like, does that mean like when no. you fly with a cheaper, like there's a higher percentage you might get into an accident? I mean, they, like, no, they, they make like, they, they charge for baggage, they, you know, checking in your baggage. They, mm. they charge for food. No, they're like, like the they, cricket. Yeah, basically. Cricket mobile. Exactly. Oh, okay. You pay gotcha. for every little thing. Every little thing. Uh, Southwest, gotcha. you kind of just pay one price, but you get most of the stuff. Yeah, you get, oh, okay. you get nuts, peanuts and shit. So oh. if you want to be cheap, <laughs> Spirit is amazing. You know yeah. what I mean? Because yeah. I'm not bringing anything. I yeah. usually fly Southwest because that's usually whatever every, every time I go. Yeah, Southwest, Southwest in itself is a little bit of a budget airline. Really? Because mm-hmm. you can choose your own seats, you know? There's no first class. Spirit Airline is funny though, like the the seats are old. Yeah, <laughs> like no, it looks like trust... an old bus, like a school bus. <laughs> yeah. Oh damn! I don't trust that shit. Yeah. Uh, By the way, going back to Brexit, <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how how we go from topic. Yeah, to that's the off tangentness. <laughs> yeah, uh, Brexit was basically a a referendum. Like people, there's there's this, this the UK is is part of the European Union, which is basically just a, a union of all the European countries. Most of them, not not all, all of them, but they share the same currency. You know, they share the euro. Um, they basically have a travel free zone so you can go from Switzerland to France without like going through customs or border. Like it's basically just crossing, like going Mm. from Nevada to California, yeah, stuff like that. Um, but for the longest time, the UK always held its own currency. Like they always wanted a little bit of independence because it's, they're an Island. They're not really connected by land to any other European country. Um, so they always kind of like were at the independent of the European union, but now they literally want to get out of the, the European Union so they can decide on their currency so they can decide on their um like it's it's it they, they basically decide on like the food like they have like out here in the states we have the uh the food and drug administration FDA. the FDA like the European Union has like its set own set of rules of what farmers can grow what what they can export what they can so it's just a little bit more control of your country type yeah more control of your yeah. country uh but the problem is that it was a referendum it was kind of like just a poll like people just said like yeah we want to leave and but like the people who wanted to leave live in like in farms and like in the r- rural areas of the uk but people who depend on the european union who live in big cities like london uh, manchester they were like no we want to stay like we we get european money into the, the economy it's a lot of money like europeans can move to the uk so easily and live here and pay taxes like we want that but now like it, since it was a referendum it wasn't really uh politically binding mm-hmm. but people are like no you you promised us so now it's a, it's a whole mess right now like i don't well, know i was gonna say so what ended, what ended up happening with that whole they thing still, they're like- st- well they're still part of the european union i think in march is when they actually exit the the european mm. union and it's going to be a whole a whole mess like they're having issues because like the 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 prime minister of the uk is not getting a deal from their own government like it's it's a mess like i i'm not too versed into it to be honest okay but it's definitely like they're just trying to claim depend like independency from mm-hmm. so you left london a year and a half after you got there yeah which was what mid 2016 i would say uh 2017 i left in Feb- oh, 2017? Uh, february of 2017 because oh, i moved okay. out there in july no september 2015 oh, okay yeah and uh, and you moved back to Dallas. I moved back to Dallas because my sister lived out there, and I was like, I need to find something. I need, mm-hmm. to, I need to. I mean, I I still want to 
be, have my own business and like shoot weddings and shoot events and all that. Well, what yeah, I was going to say, what is your goal? Cause it looks like you can do audio engineering, you can do video production, photography. Like what is your, what is your goal? My for goal being back in the United States. Like what do you want to do? Um, I really want to get into, uh, I want to start shooting a lot more brands. I want to start, um, basically coming up with, uh, campaigns and like creative out. content for commercials and all yep. that and branding, but more coming up with the ideas, coming up with the ideas for a commercial, coming up with the ideas for a whole marketing yep. campaign. And That's stuff my like dream that. too, man. Really? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, hey, it's my dream too, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's like probably like the most creative you can get in the business side of mm -hmm. the world. Yeah. And I really want to work with, uh, you know, big brands like Adidas. I love sports. So I, I'm, I like, <clears throat> I would, so they basically come up to you and be like, hey, Fernando, we love your work. We, we're going to give you this budget. Can mm -hmm. you please create us the complete creative for what yeah, we're like, trying to... Yeah, basically like an agency yeah. that come to you and be like, hey, all here's our brief. The trust in you, yeah. though. Because yeah. like I even I even heard like with like Sam and Nico, like they were even talking about this on their podcast, is they still have issues. Even though they get like dope brand deals, mm -hmm. sometimes there's still a lot of red tape or whatever. Oh, yeah, you yeah. Go, like, and I, I feel like... I you're going to go through that no matter what. That's mm. just how the game is. But I would really like to have that free range. Yeah. Like they come up to me and they say, do this. We love your creativity. Like uh, Spike Jones is probably like one of the ones mm -hmm. I feel like they kind of give him. Yeah. The control. I've seen, yeah. His or any of them, Spike really... Lee, any of them. Like I think they give him them the control because they have that. Yeah. And then rapport. Have you seen the, the one with the, the girl dancing around? Yeah. The Apple, like, the Apple one. Was it Apple? I thought it was a perfume one. Oh no, I haven't seen it. Perfume then. commercial. Uh, with, with the walls extend and stuff. No, about the Apple commercial. No, about the the girl that's just dancing around like a hotel, and it's like a constant shot. Oh, like, is that with all the mirrors? Oh, and that's stuff? a Spike, yeah. Yeah. Spike Jones one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And like stuff like that. Well, is, the one where she jumps into the air. Yeah, and yeah, that's a Spike Jones. Yeah, really? it, it was for um, it was that girl from the the TV show The Leftovers. She's freaking amazing. Yeah. But yeah, that that was that's always Spike Jones, bro. He's always like yeah. doing weird stuff, you Spike know. Jones. And it's all choreography. Yeah. If you look at a lot of his stuff, it's all choreography. It's dance based. It's movement based. Like, yeah. You know. Wait. But, so that that's kind of like the idea of what you want to do. That's my. Is you want a creative direct? Yeah. Essentially. Creative director. Yeah. How do you, how do you as a freelance, you know, engineer, photographer, videographer, how do you build that brand of that's what you do? It's it's honestly it's it's. I think it's a lot of free work and just creating the commercials on your own, like just borrowing the Adidas logo and like create, like create, something. like create, maybe creating like a fake company, like the one you were talking about earlier yeah. with the man that, and then making a commercial for that's, that. That's what I did. I was in charge. I was the marketing director for that company. Um, and we actually made money on it. Like oh it really? Was, yeah. We made a little bit of money. Nice. I think we made around like 500 pounds or something. Um, uh, but that was just like us, just four of us just like hustling. Um, but yeah, I was in charge of the marketing campaign and we actually came up with a marketing campaign for it which was like testimonials of dudes just like telling like, as if they were like, 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 uh, what do you call them? Um, what do you call when people are trying to get sober? The AA meetings? AA what meetings. Yeah, yeah. We do like testimonials of that. Like people explain like their whole story of like how they lost their girlfriend. And like, you can tell that like you need to think of like what the viewer is trying to like, what message you're trying to show the viewer. And like the viewer thinks like, Oh, these people probably, you know they're 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 widows like they're yeah because emotion died. is a very strong thing in video exactly so so we came out with this whole campaign at the end it's like yeah you know my girl left me because i kept shaving and and i left a, a mess in the sink <laughs> and that's, that's how we sold our product that's like that's people that. are like that that's nice. just funny like stuff like that i love coming out with creative ideas mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. so i think just building your brand is just definitely just doing the the actual commercial like you, you don't have to depend on the company giving you the go like a lot of these companies are very creative and they welcome these ideas sometimes mm -hmm. so if you come up with a cool campaign and you show it to them like you might pick it up are you ever afraid that they might steal the idea that's always i think that's that's inevitable and that's something that you can't really control let you hold back let yeah you. but isn't there something you could do to trademark like the documentation that of what you were of the uh, concept yeah. of things like that as soon as, soon as you upload it yeah to youtube like hey here's that so if but you could wanted you to really Cause like I've heard bits being stolen from the Just Kidding Films crew and stuff. Really? Bits? Yeah, like their their skits and everything have been stolen. Oh, comedy you know? comedians steal each other's so stuff all the time. So how can you really patent anything or you know? Yeah. Um, it, I think com comedy is another thing though. Comedy is more of like a, it's a network of funny people, and a lot of the times they'll just like, um, I won't talk to that person anymore, or or I'll exile them. You know what I mean? Mm. But when it comes down to like 
actual business stealing your idea, then it comes onto a legal thing. Like I know, I know, I know comedians like they can sue, mm-hmm. but a lot of them, they, it's not as serious to them. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like they'll just look at that person. And oh, like, oh, got they, it. They suck. Was, but with a with a brand like that, you could pursue legal action. But yeah. I feel like I feel like it wouldn't be, be worth it half the time because they'll always if it's a big brand like they can always just fight it and they can just keep you, it you going for years and then drain you out of your money and then you lose you know yep. what i mean that there's also did you ever see that video i think it was a vice video on that dude that did the menthol uh nikes oh yeah his yeah. creative director he just designed his own uh nike airs nike airs and it, it was like the, he he painted them and designed them like uh, the, the menthol, menthol cigarette cigarettes packaging the mm-hmm. pa- packaging and Nike came out for, to like came out for him. He was like, "You can't be doing this. Like, you're using our brand and stuff like that." But like, people got behind it. And he got like a following, and like, he just got a lot more gigs out of it. Like, but they, that that whole thing, like, I think he got a lot more gigs because he was actually, you know, trying to put out the message that, you know, cigarettes kill you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, stuff like that is definitely the way to go. Be controversial. Mm-hmm. and people will pick up controversial is something that will always attach to people it's the shock value you yeah, know definitely. everybody's always looking for that yeah that's tight though man yeah wait so you 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 mentioned that now you're on you're 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 on twitch now i'm on twitch right? cuz oh, you that's that's snap. a that's a side side hustle i love video games bro how do you I, how do you like the twitch platform i i think it's honestly it is a lot more liberating it yeah. gives you a lot more freedom to you know build your own brand than youtube nowadays it's honestly i mean you're basically streaming your life like you build a brand just by having a following an actual following it's you're there you're talking to the people you know face to face it's 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 honestly such a it's a fun little platform i love that mm-hmm. i love that site who, who who owns twitch did didn't they get bought <laughs> out by uh something big. some big company yeah, i remember big. amazon <laughs> Amazon was it Amazon? It was, yeah. yeah, that's why yeah, you get Twitch Amazon. Prime. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Thing. Yeah, I was like, I was about it's to big. Say Google. Yeah, I was about <laughs> yeah. to say Google, but that's There's YouTube. Amazon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. The thing I like about it, and like, this is always going back, is the, the community is, a uh, you know, it's nerds. I'm a nerd. Mm-hmm. I love video games. I've always loved that stuff. And they're very, um, the community is very tight-knit. You know yeah. what I mean? So whatever you're playing, people really do. They, of course, there's always trolls and stuff. Yeah. And that's, you just got to work with that when you're in the when you're a bigger person but it's the community is so tight and you can learn so much if you're a real person who really takes video games seriously like go on there yeah you can learn no is it mostly for video games or is it it used to be okay. nowadays people there's a whole everything yeah there's a whole there's a category that's called just just chatting so it's basically just people talking like chat rooms it's like a podcast yeah, there's a, and there's like uh you know andy milanakis like he'll go around and he'll just live stream. Yeah. What? Oh, his shit is so when funny. When you said Andy Milanakis, there was this one episode. Oh, no, it was a one video. Was it you that showed me? Which one? He was, like, live streaming outside of a coffee shop, and then some old dude tries to pick him up. Oh, yeah. He was, he was oh, live yeah, streaming on so Twitch. Oh, yeah, that was so That was on Twitch. That was so That was on weird. Twitch. Yeah. He was live streaming on, on Twitch. Yeah, that shit's And funny. some dude was trying to, he thought he was a kid. Like, yeah. He was a pedophile, <laughs> and he tried to pick him up. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you guys know Andy Milanakis is, like, 30 seven now bro he's, he's, oh, he's in his 40s oh is yeah, he 40 yeah, yeah, yeah. and he looks I, like a I remember. he looks like a child yeah which is kind of tied to me i'm like damn i wish yeah. i looked like young like that yeah because yeah. i remember when like way back in the day when this tv show was airing Andy Milanakis. i thought he was like 15 16 Dude, same years here. old yeah. but then i remember being shocked but like 10 years ago 12 years ago oh he's actually 28 years old i'm like what yeah. you know yeah I, I still didn't get it i was like wait how like is he is he? Is this a bit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. He puts on makeup every day. Do you guys still remember the, the the theme song? I got peas on my head. Yeah, don't call don't me. Don't call a me a pea head. I got Bruce Lee's on my head. <laughs> but don't call I, me a Lee head. Now I please excuse me. I got to get my tree fed. <laughs> bro, what the hell was that song about? I don't know, bro. Adam Miller August is super funny to me. I think he has like a comedic sense. Yeah. That I'm like, oh, I like this shit. That weird yeah. Tim and Eric type. He's funny as fuck. Like, yeah. Tim and Eric, which is that? Which is that one? The one on Adult Swim. They're funny. They're really. They're oh, I'm thinking of the me. Eric Andre show. Oh, that he's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You watch sure, Eric Andre? I'm, yeah, I'm sure he took inspiration from Tim and Eric. That's my kind of bro. I, I think agree. a lot of people did. Yeah. We actually like talked about it too, like for this podcast. Like, should we try to make our guests one day just feel super uncomfortable? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they yeah, were bro. like, nah. Bro, like I, I was hearing like how the Eric. What is it, Eric Andre? Show? Eric Andre. Yeah, like, <laughs> like he'll he'll do stuff. Like he'll turn the thermostat <laughs> up all the way. He'll make it smell like shit in there. Like people are really saying, like this fool makes it the most uncomfortable yeah. interview you can possibly do. 
And like, you know, you see it on camera and you're like, it's not that bad there. But it's bad. Like, it's bad. Yeah. Like, he'll try to fuck you up. I, has, I mean, it's kind of tight. Like, yeah. I respect just how little like, self he just he just doesn't care like it's it's amazing bro it's like it's an art it. for him not to care yeah, that much like, it's like and it's he, he's very good at getting into character yeah like if he if he does something awkward with you yeah and like he's like crying in front of your face and he's like please help me please help me <laughs> yeah like he won't laugh he no. won't like like you know giggle or anything like that you he'll gotta keep be that a, character going yeah you gotta be a he'll psychopath. get up into your face and he'll like kiss you he's <laughs> he gonna be like, a psychopath you gotta be a yeah. psychopath yeah. to be that like that you, committed you, you think so yeah it's, it's like, called method acting bro I mean that's commitment then Psychopathic Psychopathic, psychopathic. Yeah. <laughs> What the fuck is what? psychopathic Wait, So so why why is Twitch better than YouTube then I, I think it's, it has less restrictions Less saturation uh, Less saturation Are you talking about like when and it comes to like things you can say on camera No no they still have a, a You know <coughs> a, You know What do you call them Um they still have the terms and conditions. Like you can't obviously no say hateful shit and stuff yeah. like that. Um, you can't show nudity and stuff like that. But I think like you have more freedom to grow. Yeah. Because in comparison to YouTube, YouTube right now is pushing a lot of corporate media now. Like all you see on YouTube now is is late show videos. Like people who are actually on on public television are taking over YouTube. And it's like YouTube started out as a you know user content, like user created content. You know, it was for for the community. Are you talking was, about like the Will Smiths now? Yeah, it's just, it's, it's it's saturated with Will Smith. Plus, it's they're, they're, Jimmy they're also um, I think the whole YouTube Red series where they they constantly keep pushing you to uh, upgrade to their premium platform and then not only that but they're suppressing like things videos that are like oh well if you're talking about conspiracies that we're now we're going to push you back we're yeah. going to push you down you yeah. know or if your videos you know not advertiser friendly then your most of your subscribers won't see it you know what i mean like yeah. things like that bro they're definitely censoring a lot of stuff <clears throat> yeah so i i would see it so twitch doesn't do anything like that uh i mean unless you're saying hateful stuff like yeah. they'll definitely censor you but yeah, yeah like if you're uh, a top-notch conspiracy theorist and you have a lot of followers they won't push you down they'll put you on the top page and yeah be like, they don't really care they just want to make sure you're not like he keeps saying just yeah. no hateful no, no hateful racism stuff. how do you think. feel about alex jones being deleted off twitter i find it funny and it would, i find it hilarious didn't it they hilarious, delete his bro. youtube and his and his twitter yeah and he tried bro. to go on i think stitcher radio and like he got shut down of everything isn't but, that crazy but, though, but he bro? got he got shut down because he was he was i mean i don't even want to talk about that yeah uh, he's, he's a little controversial he's very no, controversial bro, you he's know how very much, controversial and i don't agree with a lot of things that he, he says yeah but i will say this when you shut one person's voice down when they're completely in the right to spread yeah. things, you give them more. You power. set a bad presidents, bro. Yeah, you set a bad presidents. Like now, it's like now, now that we uh, uh, see somebody get shut down. Now, if somebody else gets shut down for something that's not even as big of a deal, we're like, okay, well, that's the yeah. Thing where's that they our do. Fe- freedom you of know? speech? You know what yeah. I mean? That's well. I mean, it's it, it's not really freedom of speech because they're their own. Com- they're a company. They can they control that. Like they can uh, control what's on their platform. You know? That's completely true. That's true. That's freedom of yeah. speech, but not. I agree with you on that one. Got it. Yeah. I agree with you on that one, bro. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, but yeah, I think Twitch it just gives you a lot more freedom to create and like, just you, it gives more freedom to the to the actual community yeah. rather than big corporations. Mm-hmm. That's kind of a, a a world leap there, man. You 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 like marketing and advertising, but then you also Twitch and you video game, right? That's like yeah. like two two different worlds right there. It definitely is, but I mean, it's, but at the same time, not. Because it's social media, it's branding, and it's, it's yeah. putting you out there. It's another platform. So oh, okay, yeah. Streams of revenue, so. different streams Wait, of revenue. What's yeah, your a lot what, of revenue? What do you usually stream? I usually stream video games. What's your favorite? What's your game? like? What game? Uh, I've been streaming a lot of Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. Oh, you do that type? Is of... Is it good? It's amazing, bro. It's it, on, it's on it, the on the Nintendo game, Switch, right? In Nintendo Switch, you got one game of the year in 2017. Oh, I want man. Let's go. Let's go get one right now. I have my I have my Switch here. You yeah. have the game with you? Yeah. Let me play it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> cool. Yeah, we'll get what it. about uh? You don't do you do PC gaming? I do PC what's gaming. What's your favorite PC game right, right now? now? Apex Legends. And what's that like? Apex Legends is basically a battle royale. Oh, okay. Kind of like PUBG, PUBG Fortnite. Fortnite. But oh, is that how you were saying that the game we we're playing last night, the Brawl Stars? Yeah. Was kind of like that? A little bit, yeah. But, but nah, Brawl Stars, nah. Brawl Stars is more like League. Yeah, it's. But th- nowhere even close to League. Yeah, three versus League, three. Was yeah. It League is better or just League of Legends? League of Legends is way more complicated. It's more oh, complicated. I hate that, yeah. bro. Yeah, I love League, League of Legends. Though. Dota. League of Legends. League of Legends. League of Legends. League of Legends. Yeah, dude. People, I think the. Dota is one of the biggest competition wise, but people are winning 12 to 24 million. Damn. Damn. a lot of money yeah. on Twitch. Damn. It's, yeah. It's I, I, I follow even even the the low uh 
Well, I mean, like people who have like sizable audience who have like 50 constant viewers. Yeah. They're making like, like per subscriber, they make $5 and there's people out there who have like 2,500 subscribers yeah, per it's month. It's ridiculous. If you Ninja's make them like up, one of the top ones, right? Yeah. And then like Dr. Disrespect. And then you've got, uh, what's his name? Uh, you have uh, I'm a cutie pie. You have a uh, soda poppin. Who's my favorite one though? Who's really good at video games at first persons. Um, why well, I can't even think of his name. What, what, what do you look like? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty. They just look like a normal. He's on. Is he on Cloud Nine? Shroud. Oh, Shroud. Yeah. Shroud is. Yeah, yeah. Like, bro, I'm, I I feel like he has like Autobot hands. Yeah, no, they're insane. Like, like that reflex. Like you can't. It's gift. It's like a gift. It's like I'm when you can play the piano at age three. I, <laughs> you know what I mean? No. What? You never heard of that? People, no. kids being able to do that. Like, there's oh, three age of, three. I think you said age three, like the podcast. Oh no, no, like, no, no. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> okay, bro. <laughs> no i think it, well, a video game I, sorry i think the brain is a muscle and i think you can train it to be that you know I, to get it to that level of i say like this because i like this one guy was talking about it like um you know do you call him professional vinyl vi- vinyl vi- 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 violinist <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> that, that oh, took shit. you a minute bro <laughs> have a stroke over there, G. um well, he, he's been doing it for like 27 years and he was saying like how long it took him to get it down. Yeah. But he's like, there is prodigies who at the age of four can play exactly like how he plays. Yeah. So oh, definitely, it's, yeah. it's kind of like a gift you can kind of, because I swear Shroud, like he does things that I'm just like. Yeah, his brain is just bro, like on constant. Your, com- your computer, computing power is like next level. Yeah. Like just being able to be like boop, boop. Yeah, headshot, it definitely headshot. is that imbalance in this world. Like, you know how you have people who have billions of dollars there's people who are struggling on a hundred dollars a week. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. People have too much talent. <laughs> some people, though, well, you want to bring some your, people have you too wanna... much talent and some people have too much time. You know what I mean? Like, so are you for socializing talent, bro? Everybody on the same, talent, bro, on the same level. Let's give everybody the same amount of talent. <laughs> I'm down. Everybody takes yeah. it as picks. <laughs> what do you think the, the future of content creation is going to be? Cause now that you, now that you're like into the whole world of marketing and advertising, mm-hmm. and you're also you What's also do next? content creation yourself, yeah. what do you think is that next step? I think it, we're already on that next step. Um, you know, just building a community and being more personable with your community and your audience. Um, like people didn't understand vloggers for the longest time; they didn't know why they were so popular. Like, why do people want to watch other people's lives? <laughs> like. It, it was just so insane and I actually i did my whole thesis on that on like how for my master's on like how vloggers um can be so beneficial for brands to you know, use as advertising and it's just because pe- their bloggers are more personable there's it's there's a level of authenticity to them that you can't really get from celebrities like yeah. traditional media celebrities like you're, you're basically sharing your life and that gives you just a lot of credibility. It's funny because I think that's what they were talking about with uh, Jack Black. You know how he started that Jablinski Oh, gaming. that shit's so funny. So the thing about him, why people... Because first off, it's Jack Black and I think anybody likes Jack Black. But people are saying why it's way more successful than like Will Smith mm. is just due to the fact that he's filming it yeah like a normal dude like who doesn't know, really know how to use a camera. Yeah. He's, he acts very normal in it. He doesn't have like high end production, which isn't a bad thing, Mm -hmm. but it kind of shows like a realness to it. Yeah. You know, that's why I think people love Jack Black because he has like this uncle, like he feels like a family person, like you, 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 somebody in your family would resemble him. Yeah. And I think that's why a lot of people are, are more closer to that. That's why I like H3H3. That's why I like watching Just Kidding Films. Yeah. Is because they, they're more realistic so, they yeah. don't seem like robotic like they, exactly they live this high-end lifestyle mm-hmm. which they could they all could yeah they have the money and I, think, I think that's why people are giving a lot of flack to youtube because they're like you remember the youtube rewind where it started with will smith and they're like yeah God. this is just so fake no it didn't that go down as the most disliked the video most disliked <laughs> YouTube that's rewind. terrible it's that's insane nuts. and it's a, it, that's, that's a win in itself though I mean, hey, it's, a, it's a win for the, the community. The owner, or what's it? Not the owner, but the, I think the CEO of YouTube actually responded to that, bro. They, they, he, they, they sent out like an email blast or whatever, yeah. addressing the situation of like, you know, we we realized that it may not have been what it needed to be because <clears throat> she said even my daughter was watching it. And she said she felt it was very cringe. Yeah, you know, I was like, <laughs> it was, I was just like, yeah. Fake. It was... Listen to your daughter. Your daughter feels the way everybody else. K pop. You know I mean? Your your daughter is the audience of the platform. Yes. Like, just pay attention to they should have played the video for her before they released the video yeah, exactly. what you thought, well you know? i don't know about that 
Oh, I'm just saying it would have been better than whatever. She'd be like, was. yeah, get more Fortnite in the video. Get more please. Fortnite. More give Fortnite, Fortnite, Fortnite dances. Where's she mixing? Give me more Fortnite. Give me more Fortnite. Yeah. Give, me, give me more Fortnite. Give me more Fortnite, please. <laughs> but I also understand, too, like from the side of like where YouTube's standing at, it's like, it's the business, bro. It's tough, bro. It's, it's tough. It's a business, and they have to make their money. And when people, it's uncharted territory. That's the whole is. YouTube. You know who 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 would have thought that that people could upload whatever, whenever? Like, because these 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 are things that we were we used to take copyright classes at, at AI, mm -hmm. and they would talk about how like, oh yeah, if you do a video or a photo, you take it in a place, and you see that Walmart logo, they can legally come after you mm -hmm. and tell you to take that photo down. But yet we have billions of people or mil hundreds of millions of people uploading photos every day to social media how do you audit that yeah how do you audit what you can and cannot upload when it comes to like copyright and all that stuff you know Is that, yeah. you know do you guys still have that feature in your instagram where you can play music i do you do yeah. I, for some reason it disappeared on mine really i think it may be because i canceled my apple music subscription I don't, but have, but, I don't have an Apple subscription. Oh, you don't? I do Spotify. I got. I don't got to figure that out. But I was thinking, like, I would, that just triggered me thinking of, like, what, how does that work as far as copyright goes, right? Like, yeah, having you can actually have music built into your Instagram and play the original audio file from iTunes in your Instagram story. Like, how does that work? Or, or can you use it as long as it's only fifteen seconds? I guess you know it's I mean? the that, and then also the fact that it's. It's only 15 seconds, and oh, I forgot what I was gonna say. But like, no, no like for example, <laughs> <laughs> you said you said that um, um, like it's uncharted territory. I think brands are now or companies are now understanding the platforms a little bit better. Yeah. And instead of censoring that content, for example, if you upload a an edit and you put on a, a license track from Drake, let's say now they won't take it down. Now they won't copyright strike you. Now they'll just they'll strike you for, with a copyright, but they'll say. Whatever money your video makes goes to us because yeah, you're yeah. using our stuff. That, yeah. So now they have people out there like searching the web and be like, oh, this person is using, you know, this artist. Mm -hmm. like, I think you have one of your artists like explain, one of your guests explain a little bit better. Yeah. But I feel like companies are getting smart about it. They're <clears> barely <throat> understanding how the internet works and how they can make money. I mean, think about influencers, right? Um, how, how back in the day... And we're saying back in the day, five years ago, you would have a model who had five million followers on Instagram, yeah. and then she would post a photo with the booty or whatever the hell they oh, were promoting booty. at the time, and they would get all that traction to the people that paid them to post that, but they didn't know that was an ad. Yeah. And now, now they're, you they have legally to have to put hashtag ad yeah. in your first post, your actual caption. Yeah. Yeah, because so I'm sure you're... people just felt like it was very unauthentic. Well, I mean, dude, look at what happened with that. We were talking about this with the, was it? Last host or two hosts ago about the fire festival. Yeah, we're talking about how literally this whole. Remember, the, have you heard about the fire festival? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I was, and the whole I, fuck Jerry thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah how was, all was, that happened with just influencers promoting it, like yeah. literally just like hot hot chicks with millions of followers posting an orange square. Sex sells, bro. Saying can't wait for that fire festival. That was a great marketing campaign, though. Yeah, I will say they they sold the shit out of that. Oh, they festival. did. It was but they it was a successful deliver. marketing campaign. Yeah, but it was a terrible fucking show. Yeah. yeah. Have was, you watched the documentary? I started, but I remember uh, going through the Reddit as it was happening. Yeah, like people uploading the the photos and commenting like. Guys, wow, that's like, crazy. we're eating sandwiches. Like, just <laughs> I was laughing Bro, my those, ass. Off. I was dying when I seen the sandwich, and it was like, this is their high end food. <laughs> it's yeah, like bro. cheese and lettuce. Bro, the memes crack me up, bro. Like, people <laughs> uploading their, their, like, they made sandwiches and they're just like a sandwich with like lettuce and like just a piece of bread in between. Be like, oh, I'm eating like all these fancy ass fire festivals <laughs> attendees. Like it's on bougie now and shit like that. <laughs> it was it was fucking funny, man. But yeah, that that's insane. It's fucked too at the same time. But most of those kids were probably rich parents. Yeah. Had hella money. Yeah. I think the saddest part of that whole thing was just the people who didn't get paid in the in at the, the workers. The yeah. workers. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah. But hopefully so, they got compensated. I don't know the whole story. Yeah. Yeah. Going back to Twitch, man. Uh because I've seen I've seen like makeup artists on there too, right? Like yeah. you can it's it's basically YouTube, Anything. right? Yeah. You yeah. can upload videos that were already pre made. You don't upload, you no. just stream. Oh, you just stream. You just stream oh, yeah. so you can't upload videos that you edited no. and all that stuff. No. So Twitch is strictly streaming. Yeah. You 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 have to have a webcam and then you do you do your thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Do you I mean, use like OBS for that? I use OBS, yeah. Okay. But um there's also a whole creative uh category where people are just painting or they're doing Photoshop mm -hmm. like and they're getting paid. Like they get donations and shit like that. 
So you know. it's like it's a whole different bro. You why can, don't we do this podcast on Twitch, bro? Uh huh. You can definitely do it. Well, realistically, the reason why um internet it's just the you uh what are we doing on YouTube? YouTube's we, a little bit easier, we were, and yeah. we're trying to build our YouTube. We're yeah. not trying to build our Twitch. Exactly. And the thing is, though, I think if you have a big YouTube, you can get Twitch partnered if you have a big uh, okay. enough but you have to have like a hundred thousand yeah. subscribers and yeah. something else like yeah there's it's, requirements it's, for sure it's yeah. pretty easy to get affiliated though so people can subscribe to you oh yeah for sure you only have like you need 50 followers and like three constant viewers yeah for each stream mm-hmm. well isn't there a way to stream both to youtube and twitch at yeah, the same time streamly. you can yeah. do everything oh, you can okay. do like that's facebook paid, chew so- all that yeah paid software mm-hmm. but i think the, the the trick to twitch is the interaction yeah, so exact unless, engagement. Yeah, unless you already have a big following, if you're trying to build on Twitch, you have to constantly interact with the people who are watching you. Yeah. Or if not, you won't be Because if you see the top dudes, they're always like saying whoever subscribes, they're like, oh, thank you for the subscribing, blah, blah, blah. And anybody who's chatting, like yeah. they'll usually talk back. So Twitch yeah. is essentially like the way Ustream used to be, right? Yeah. You ever heard of Ustream? Yeah. You remember Ustream? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I never actually used it. Remember me but. me and the homies way back in the day, bro, we would go like in my basement and then we would just live stream ourselves just hanging out, bro. Yeah. And people would come in and chat and really? like, yeah, this, this was like 2010. That was 2000. when the resolution was still a box, <laughs> like four by three. Yeah. <laughs> That's OG days, bro. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, no. you could you could do the whole uh iMovie filter over <laughs> yourself, bro. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. I was, so, so I was talking about the development of technology, man. How, how far do you think games have like do you see how far games have come from like the 80s to right now where do you see it going in like the next 10 years do you think we'll be living in virtual reality um we're already living in virtual reality you think so they, they have vr chat people get on that shit that vr wow. chat's hilarious so hilarious <laughs> what, what, what's, what's a vr chat it's like second life what do you mean you never played second life yeah well i never played it but i've seen it like you just play a character and you basically play a character in the world no, but you you don't put like a VR goggle head. You do, on. yeah. Oh, you do, and yeah. you can see through it and everything. Yeah, and you Bro. interact with other people. And you people. can be any character. You can be like Sonic. Yeah. You can be like uh, any anime character. You can be like big ass dinosaurs, and yeah. you just talk with people and go. To, and you can play games and do stuff. What what, what game? What what platform is it on? Is v- this on? It's VR. So it's Steam. VR. It's, it's Steam. Oh, it's okay. So it's a Steam it's thing. PC. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm not big on that platform. The whole Steam thing. This got games though. Yeah, Chuck. we love. I love gaming. Okay. I I really I was I was literally about to buy one. I think I'm still going to. I'm gonna get HTC Vive. Oh, I'm just gonna yeah. set it up in Let's here. Go half and half on it, bro. I'm down. Just because I I think I think um augmented reality will be the first thing that really dives into it. Because the thing about VR, like what I hear, is um I don't think it's dead. I just think it needs a little bit more refining still. Yeah. Just due to the fact that there's um the disconnect of actual feeling. That's why when Brandon, you know from uh node or however you want to say it or uh stress level zero he he made the the gloves where you can put on and you can actually see your fingers move and stuff yeah and i think that tactile feeling makes it more immersive the more immersive you get into it the more vr is but it's just expensive you need a lot of room yeah so once they figure out that little treadmill thing where you could run in place bro like that's that's gonna be crazy yeah and they they have it you know yeah yeah I had a I had a friend who used to tell me like back in the day like VR is gonna be huge like AR VR like he wanted to start working on AR VR technology projects mm. then uh, and I still still think like I don't think it's dead like you said I think it's kind of like 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 crypto and yes, blockchain it's technology <laughs> like, no no it's just at a point where like it's not popular yeah but it's that they're working on the technology mm. to one day where you are using it you don't even notice you're using it you know what I mean yeah. Cause I think exactly. that's cause right now when you think about it, like you see all these VR things where you have this dude with the huge headset, the goggles, the big, big old cord, gloves, and he, he's he's, he, he's like on a treadmill. He looks like a nerd, right? Yeah. He looks like a. But then once you get minimized that technology to where it's just like maybe it's just some glasses, you know, yeah. and then you're you're done. Like that's it, you know. It auto senses everything in your body. But they have you that know? place now, like where you can actually go and they'll have like the obstacle set up and like uh you know. VR correctly, so that's a combination so you can actually of VR like and feel, augmented. Yeah, so you can feel the walls, Shit. and then when you walk onto like the outside platform, they yeah. have these fans go on, so you can feel the air. And it's crazy. like I was thinking about that, I was like, wait till they have like laser tag, but in VR world, yeah, and they they can just have like movable blocks, and you can move the blocks around. Damn. Like, the room computes it. Yeah, yeah. And now you have like you can be in the world of like Doom or a zombie chasing one <laughs> or anything. Like, see, those that's why I feel like. If Sega or any of those arcade places 
implement that yeah i think that can change the whole world of vr yeah you know? it's just it's the portability too because you have to be able to walk around with it yeah with a backpack or something exactly because yeah. it's still corded that'd be that'd be pretty that'd be like a whole um like full circle like just vr arcades popping oh, up that'd be so that'd be insane with the whole rooms that just because you can have an empty room imagine how much weight yeah. people would lose yeah yeah how much weight people would lose if they're just gaming all day and they're like doing physical exercise That'd be tight. I know this sounds stupid, but if VR gets good or augmented reality, you can take out a lot of physical shit. You can have an empty room turn into whatever you want. So if you want to show off something or have an exhibit, you can be like, oh, I just want to rent the ballroom. You yeah. don't have to charge, you know, pay labor costs and everything to get everybody in there. You can just yeah. be like, yo, it's augmented reality. You can just walk around and like interact with the stuff. Yo, that yeah. would be crazy. Yeah. Sick. You know, they do say that, uh, was it uh, in the next, 10 years 11 years till 2030 they say like uh 40 percent of of jobs here in the u.s are going to be automated or they're going to be like ar yeah. or uh artificial intelligence you know what i mean like kind of like kind of how like how mcdonald's it. is cutting out cashiers bro, have you been yeah. to mcdonald's and use yes. that menu yes it's tight bro it's dope. Nice. you can use apple pay bro so you literally don't even have to take out your wallet anymore you yeah. just walk up to this tablet you click 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 at the car check out double click on your phone and you pay for it and you, you sit down order. you just take a little cone thing that has your number on it and they bring you your order yeah you know? I, 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 and i think that feels more like a restaurantish kind of thing now if they had those at the, at the tables that'd be crazy <sighs> that'd be, so every time you sat down or your burger just pops up from under the table that'd yeah. be tight well we went to uh <laughs> have, you, have, have you been to revolving sushi before no no i see i've seen I've seen the place. There's a place here in Vegas. I uh, support revolving sushi. Yeah, you've yeah been, it's on you've Spring been Mountain. Yeah, and uh, you basically sit around this like this this just what is it called? <laughs> Re- conveyor uh, belt. Conveyor belt, and it just goes back and forth with food on both sides, right? It's sushi. Yeah, sushi. But and the, you just yeah, get the plate. Yeah. And then they the way they charge you is every plate is like two or three dollars yeah, or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. So they at do the end of the day, Japan. they just count. Yeah, they just count your plates. <laughs> But that's tight. Like, imagine if you can do that with e- every restaurant. I yeah. mean, what it'd be next would be like uh, automated, um, like server. So it'd just be like a little iPad thing or a little like robot that just takes your drives friends. around and <laughs> takes it to you. Yeah, I low key always wanted one of those, bro. When I was a kid, the robots. Rom- no, no, no. It, it wasn't a Roomba. It was like actual, like a robot. That was like a robot buddy of yours that would just, it was a dumb thing. It was like a, no, no, bro. The reason I saw it is because you could actually have it go get you like a drink or something like that. And I'm like, just damn, have that's a kid, tight. Bro. That's tight. Just have a kid. Huh? Just have, just have a, kid. a kid. Do it. No. Yeah, that's true. Nah. Yeah. Then you got to pay all the expenses on it. So screw that. Tax refund. I just get a dog. <laughs> yeah, just get a dog. Train it. Wait, are you part of a multi channel network? I am not. I wish. Oh. Well, I kind of don't. Wait, what's a multi-channel network? <laughs> we talked about this with uh, Jeremy. Jeremy Lee, you remember? Explain it. It's just basically like a, an agency. Who owns they, multiple channels. Owns, like, yeah. owns multiple, either YouTube, Is that Twitch. On Twitch. Does Twitch have multi-channels? Um, I don't think so, no. YouTube uh, does I, for I think, sure. And on Twitch, the only thing you can get is uh, sponsored by companies mm. Yeah. Mm. and affiliate I- programs and stuff. So how does Twitch work as a platform when, like, let's say somebody's watching Fernando game and they're like, oh, bro, you did that thing with the sword and the game. I really <laughs> like that thing. I like that, bro. Are hey, you talking how do you entice people to watch you? Here's $20. Yeah. What happens to that $20? Do, do you get the whole 20 Yeah. Do you get donation. a percentage of it? You, you get the whole 20 I mean, you get, yeah, you get the- Because uh, I know YouTube- well, they, they do it through PayPal, so PayPal takes Whoa. a cut. And if I think you if you use Streamlabs, I think they take- a little uh, bit. A little bit. Yeah. But that's cool. Because I know YouTube takes a pretty big percentage. Yeah. I mean, the donations? <clears throat> of the, 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 the super likes or whatever they're called. Mm. Super chats? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, do they? Super yeah, because you can pay like 5 10 20 $30 it to Super It makes sense, chat. though. Because yeah. they have to pay the transaction fees to get into your bank account, right? Yeah. yeah. But Twitch like also, also does the uh, same thing as YouTube. You can run ads on your stream. Mm-hmm. Like, people just put, a like, streamer will put a command like, hey, guys, I'm about to do a quick little commercial break yeah you do the command you go to commercial break but if you're a subscriber you sometimes are like immune to ads so that kind of like gives uh the, in- the incentive to subscribe to a streamer that you really like just so you don't get ads it, yeah uh, so you can subscribe to a channel but do you have to stream a certain amount of times though uh well to get affiliated yeah and then people uh, can subscribe okay. to you Nice. Yeah, yeah. Twitch I'm working. I might want to try this whole Twitch thing, bro. Sounds Dude, pretty it's cool. pretty tight. Cause like, um, fun. the homegirl does it, and she she has like decent subscribers. And um, it's if it's a little bit extra money for something you're doing, like remember we were talking about it, like when you do your photo shoots. Yeah, I think that'd be really tight. Hook up a lot of 
hook it into the thing and while you're doing stuff you can talk to and then check your phone like every so often yeah talk back to the people and be like oh this is how i did this this is how because it's interaction it's learning Mm -hmm. and people people love engagement from anybody yeah the bigger you are the better because oh he's talking to me you know it's that starstruck shit but yeah it's it's but i think even even then though even if you're not that big of a content creator if i'm on twitch and i see somebody oh dude they're doing a photo shoot and then they have their instagram they're oh shit their their feet's pretty tight like they take pretty good photos i'm gonna watch this real quick yeah and then i ask a question and then you respond that's a connection they're gonna be like well this dude's real follow and it's live too and it's it's live live too so there's that deeper connection yeah of like oh now this guy's my friend yeah exactly. so i feel like it's it'd be a lot easier to make connections with people on twitch where it is live yeah 100 percent. i wonder if you could i wonder if you could take the uh the road lav kit the one that we have yeah you could put it on the a6500 and then just stream out through yeah, that yeah the hdmi Damn. yeah you, you can. can that's tight yeah there's people literally just go and buy groceries and they stream it yeah and interacting yeah. with people let's do that like right imagine now. you teaching people how to take pictures too. Yeah. Yeah. Ice Poseidon. Well, I got a photo shoot in like another him. in like 45 minutes so much. I don't like him dude I got a photo shoot in like 45 minutes so we could try it nice I mean <laughs> <laughs> yeah <clears throat> but yeah no man video games are definitely an art form in itself it's it's insane just like the, the level of work that go into video games it, it's definitely it's 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 insane Whoa, it's 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 a, it's a piece years, of art it's, it's art yeah it's People, I, I would definitely, I mean, you can't really classify, uh, rate art, but it's definitely a lot of more work than a painting. It's mm-hmm. just insane. Oh, fuck. Yeah. More than a movie. Yeah. I, I'd, even, I, yeah I'd even say it's way more work than a movie. Because uh, I was listening what? Because <laughs> a movie is, uh, you know, it's, it's like even animated movies, they're kind of binary. They're one path, you yeah. know? So they only have to design on the path that they're creating. Yeah. But in a 3D realm, you have to design every aspect of that 3D realm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, Unless like, it's well, a scenarios. linear. Like, what would that look if somebody walked by it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, okay, it, you know, Grand Theft Auto, it's not just a linear path, which some video games are, and those are a little bit easier to design because you have a set to design to, but when you're GTA, you have to design the whole entire world. Yeah. Because you're going to have people going every inch yeah. of that platform or Actually, that island. Is that why you have glitches in video games sometimes? Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. Just, I think even with the best of the best people, like the one thing is you're always going to find a bug no yeah. matter what. That's why you have firmware updates now. Yeah. That's why I think a lot of <laughs> companies aren't even like like fully finishing games because they're like, well, we'll just people fix will later. find bugs <laughs> yeah. all the time. We'll, we'll we finish it money. in the yeah. Yeah. We'll just yeah. do a hot fix yeah. and then fix it. And that's why that's why I appreciate Nintendo a lot, man. They don't put out a game until they finished it. They call it the Nintendo Polish. But I swear to God, I'm not, I'm not even trying to hate on Nintendo, but they don't make anything super graphic intensive or anything that's like... Well, like because, a God of War video game. Because they no. build off of their own engine, which yeah. is probably polished, like you just said, but they don't do stuff like Unreal. But this is, this is where the design thinking thing comes into place like nintendo knows video games they know what the the player wants to do they just want to play fun video games a lot yeah. of people don't care about the graphics 100 no, percent. like they're just i do when it comes to god of war like those I mean, definitely games, like, game, game like god of war is a, is a movie in itself it's, bro, it's insane i remember playing the first one and was it 2000 it was a is long time ago your ps2 bro the first god of war one game that came out bro and i remember at the time going like whoa yeah. these graphics are oh nuts. yeah like, it was crazy like, I've, I'll, like it'll never get better than this right yeah and then i just played the most recent one that just came out and then just for shits and giggles because i passed that game just for shits and giggles my brother pulled out the ps2 version of the first game yeah we it's popped terrible. it in we're like whoa this looks like do- like like super like what what are those games uh donkey kong yeah, on the nintendo 64, 64. Yeah. Oh, yeah that's what it looked like to me now and it's funny games. have you played those games bro no. like playstation one ga- oh my god bro like it's gonna it's, be 8-bit it's literally polygons it's like it's like s- seven-sided polygons yeah. you know what i mean <laughs> like yeah. the arms are like they look like fucking <laughs> little octobox <laughs> they're yeah. so gross i was yeah. like ew <laughs> like we played this type of stuff yeah but but it was fun like you, you don't need graph back yeah, then you, you don't you know. care about that's graphics. what you know that's all you know but you you would only care about the gameplay and if it was mm-hmm. fun yeah i think people are reverting back to that that's well, why i like nintendo yeah. like you said they're more about the gaming aspect than oh, they're more the, about the experience. The I gotta try that Legend of Zelda game now. Yeah, bro. Because I, I, I remember seeing the trailer for it and going like, "Damn, it looks pretty clean." Yeah, it it's, looked pretty it's very real. well polished. It looked probably one of the best looking Nintendo games I've seen. Yeah, yeah, um, it's definitely that, and that new Mario looks good. 
Oh, uh, yeah, I have Mario Odyssey. The one where you can drive around. <laughs> you know what I want to see that one? No, it's like it's talking like, about Mario Kart. No, it's um, it's not Odyssey. Odyssey is the one that just came out for the Switch. Is that the one where you can like you're in the city? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, that's a, that's the a Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> yeah, basically that. Yeah, that's that's another great fucking game. Does it look good? It looks amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's one is of the it best. 4K? Mario. The Switch is in 4K. No, it's 1080. See, that's why. But it, why would you want 4K in a video game, bro? Uh, it does look good because I play 4K 4K games on my computer, and that shit looks. Fucking but what does it so help you? In? I don't know. It just I love it's looking just at nice graphics. To look at. I love looking at the modeling and everything. Mm. That's one thing I'll look at a game. Is I'll sit there and I'll look like, damn, they put this shrubbery right here. Yeah, you're experiencing. And it's moving. You I, I, it. I, I used to make levels, you know, on really? Counter Strike, on Unreal. Yeah, I just like making stuff. Oh wow. Because I wanted to learn how to do it, but then I was like, this is way too hard. Yeah. Like it takes a lot of time, and I was yeah. like, I'm going nowhere with this. So that, that was me when play. I opened up Element 3D. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, and that's I don't super even simple, bro. I don't even recognize 99 percent of these like little boxes what does yeah. this do yeah after effects and animation and like anybody in that field bro i 100 percent give them so much respect oh, people yeah. are like oh like people back in the day making masks and stuff they're yeah. like it's way easier on a 3d program i'm like no, no not at all not really like do it and then i'll shut my mouth yeah but it's pretty fucking crazy like how technical you can go into it yeah, so i respect them a lot and i think they also don't get paid no, what they of them don't what they're worth yeah why do you think that is i think it's just the and i'm not too versed in it but i just think they just don't they don't know the industry that well yet like the industry is so young that i don't think they they still know how to value their their work it's kind of crazy they said like one frame uh, i might be lying so i don't want to really but they said like one frame from incredibles took like 27 days to render (sighs) that's insane that's like well, we won't say that because that might be a lie, but I know it's like stupid, ridiculous. Like one frame of The Incredibles is like seven days. Yeah. Not even a second. Yeah. That's crazy. That's fucking, I was just like, whoa, that hurt my head. Yeah. I was like, damn. Yeah. But just like. And then we end up watching it on our iPhones. <laughs> <laughs> With the Instagram compression. <laughs> on shitty internet, so it's 144. Yeah. <laughs> like, God damn it. Out of the uh, speakers of your TV where you can't even appreciate the audio. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but like games, like you don't even take into account that. Like it's it's sound design. It's, have the it's, music. You got you cr- to create an ambience just based off sound. Like that's a lot of fucking work. Mm-hmm. Mixing. And like even they also have to, they have to know about cinematography. Like when they're doing the cutscenes, they have to know. They have to know about everything. That's why Final Fantasy is like, they still have some of the craziest games. Oh yeah. Just, they got symphonies, bro. They got orchestras. Yeah. Have you, dude, I went to the, uh, the Zelda one. The Zelda symphony, bro. Oh, Beautiful, right? So good. And yeah. then they had the projection or the, the video game playing as you're hearing the sound. Really? And you're like, damn, you know, they would get to this boss fight or whatever. Dun, 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 oh, that's and then insane. you would hear it. And I'm like, whoa, this is dope. Seeing everybody move their like. See, if know, I was a billionaire, oh, I'd do that. I'd be like, while I'm playing a video game, you guys recreate the music. <laughs> Just have a whole orchestra behind you. <laughs> that's how he would spend his money as a billionaire. Wow, bro. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> trillionaire. Sorry, let's say trillionaire. All right, cool. Man, I just got goosebumps thinking about that. Yeah. Like watching. A live orchestra I played to the you video. You should. Game. Have you ever seen them live? Nope. You should, I, man. Me too, man. I hella wanted to go to the Pokemon one. Oh. There, there was a Pokemon Symphony that happened. They were like doing a tour, and I think they had a, they had a show here in Vegas at the uh, Smith Center, but I didn't go because I think tickets were like two hundred bucks. I just can't think of Pokemon music on an orchestra level. No. The bike. <laughs> I think it was more it, dude it was really cool I'll show you after yeah. this Final um, Fantasy though if you guys know if anybody's listening they probably have some of the craziest composed music I've ever heard like really? even yeah. a lot of like producers and people say like there's stuff like I, I, I like it better than Beethoven stuff that's for sure yeah but that's just because I guess the music aspect of it I'll never say Beethoven or what is it Mozart. who's the other ones Mozart Mozart, Mozart. Mozart. Mozart Bach yeah. Bach yeah, like those people. Are well, amazing. here's the like, thing, yeah. though, too. Here's the thing, is that when you listen to Bach and you listen to Mozart and Beethoven, bro, you got to realize what the world they lived in. Yeah, you got to realize what inspirations that they have. Now you have so much inspiration, yeah. bro, That's from true. your neighbor, from the guy that lives two miles. That away is from crazy. You, I never thought of that. Versus what they had, they literally had nothing. What was available? Because you got to think about it too, like music. 
there was no speakers and no nothing. Like you heard everything live from that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And just on your in and your even 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 books. If you read a book, it's because it was handmade and printed. That took six months to a year to make that book, yeah. and you were wealthy enough or whatever, or lucky enough to cut you get a book. So you got to think about the inspirations that they had back then. Damn, you know? that's trippy. Never yeah. thought so, of that. Yeah, so it's like a, it's like an uneven balance. Yeah, you can't. Like now you, can't you now, now you can have a six year old making symphonies on software that he has. Yeah, you know, mm. and then and they, he drew yeah. inspiration from like a thousand Japan different or things. Yeah. yeah, yes. So that's really, un- yeah, it's crazy, bro. Yeah. He's, right, like, so what's he's the, like, so uh, don't fucking compare, you little piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Right, so, so, uh, Damn, you're a Moser fanboy, yeah, bro. That, 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 that cop kind of went away a little bit, huh? No, it did. Yeah. Oh, thank God, man. I was getting worried. <laughs> yeah, because this was like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nah, yeah, yeah. It was in. <laughs> <laughs> what's the uh, future looking like for Mr. Fernando over here? Yeah. Uh, well, shit, man. I am... Uh, I'm a property owner now oh. uh, in Mexico. Well, you bought a house? I bought a, a piece of land <coughs> in how Mexico. Much, how much? Yeah. Like an acre? He said, I still got to build a house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 800 square meters. I don't know how much that's in acres. Is that like this? Maybe big. the size of this plot of land, maybe? Uh, I don't know. You're the homeowner, bro. Uh, but shit, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> how many it's feet is that? <laughs> 800 square I'm meters. Not gonna, I'm going to do the math right now. But 800 square meters. That's pretty big. Meters, yeah, it's pretty big. Yeah. Um, but I bought it and I'm, I'm trying to build like a little cabin. Um, and I'm just going to rent it out. And so my Airbnb it. or rent Airbnb. it? Airbnb. That's smart. Rent it. What's um, the um the laws out there for the Airbnb? It's fine. Bro, that's 8,600 square feet. Bro, that's it's pretty big. That's bigger than, I think that's probably a, almost the size of this that's, bottle. Uh, that's almost yeah. 0.2 acres. That's yeah. huge. Yeah, yeah. That's you, good, you bought it. I bought it. Yeah. Nice. Just yeah. a rough like estimate. How, how much that cost you? Like yeah. fifty bucks. <laughs> fifty pesos. <laughs> fifty pesos. How many pesos did that cost no, you? Señor, it took a lot of money. No, uh, it cost me like a, a car, a new car. Okay, so real quick, my okay. bad. I just want to talk about it. Like, you you said you have dual citizenship, right? Yes, sir. So. Is that why you were able to purchase the property, or can you still purchase the property as somebody in a different country? No, the dude that sold us uh, the plot of land is like, uh, it's, they're doing a development, so it's they're selling a big, like big part of land. Mm-hmm. They're making it into homes. Um, he told us that uh, one of the owners is a NASA scientist. So like everybody can can buy it. Yeah, come up on the microphone real quick. I'm sorry, bro. Yeah, because like um, <laughs> one thing like when we were driving to Ensenada, we oh, were yeah, we yeah, were yeah. we were yeah. seeing a lot of property, yeah. and it said ten thousand. Now I realistically believe it because it was like in the middle from like Tijuana to Ensenada. It was like in mm-hmm. the middle, but I do believe like if it was I pretty could, much oceanside. Yeah, if I could purchase yeah. that, like just one block, and yeah. just sit on it for fucking ten grand, thirty years. Yeah, it's an investment, bro. That can be like Ensenada. All those ones that were on that that beach port, they're worth a lot more expensive. Now. Yeah, they're in the millions. Yeah, easily. And I was yeah. like, bro. And if I just want to go there, it's like on the beach side. I was yeah. like, property is one of the best investments you can oh, do with your money. Hundred percent. It's tangible because it, it only goes old. up. It only goes up. <clears throat> Realistically, unless that area gets hit by like what a radiation bomb, and then you can't live there. Yeah. When it becomes unlivable, then that's when you lost. But exactly. if yeah, that I mean, happens, how often the tsunami will happen? <laughs> exactly right? yeah isn't that crazy what happened in chernobyl bro yeah isn't yeah. it crazy what happened in japan yeah what, what happened in japan That's insane all the fucking places, the tsunami all, the tsunami all the power plants like exploded and all the toxins the radiation went into the water yeah the water's like super because they built it on unstable land yeah. right <laughs> it's just because they were trying to and like, they didn't have the right make a quick buck they didn't have the um the precautions of tsunamis like they didn't they oh say they, they didn't plan it they did oh, i think plan i, it. Yeah. I, think I heard weird. about that yeah, but, it, but when I heard about it, it was more. It around, was it was worse than Chernobyl. It was a fake story that had come out saying that uh, the creator of Nintendo had died. In that, <laughs> or that that's how I heard about it. That's how I heard about it. Hate the internet. They say that so many bro. times. Like yeah. he died. No, there was a whole obituary about it written about him and everything. <laughs> and then he and then he like tweets, "I'm okay, guys." Like, yeah. Well, he did actually die pretty recently. And oh, he did. In the game, yeah. the Legend of Zelda game, they made a, a like a, a they made him a character. A com- no, they come on. What's that word? Kim, Kim, we're not helping you. Don't help him. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't help him. Don't help him. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they made him into a part of the story. Okay. And it's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty sweet. Oh, That's nice. Yeah, Did you finish nice. that game already? 
I finished it twice Ooh, just this week. So my nerd. bad. Going back to the land, you so you you don't have to go through any weird process or anything. Like no. I mean, as a Mexican, the, no. can the government take that land away if need be? Uh, Not the U.S. government. No, no, no the Mexican government. No? So if I bought in Mexico and they were like, "Yo, we need this land for military use," they'll buy you out. They can't. I mean, they'll buy you out, but for cheap, right? Those cartel yeah. dollars. Yeah. Yeah, that's scary. I'm just wondering because it's kind of interesting because I I see land in like um. Ely? Is it Ely, oh, Nevada? Yes. Ely. I don't know. Ely. Not Eli. I Ely. heard it's not Eli. Because I, I used to say I think Eli, it's Eli, Nevada. I think yeah, it's Ely. Ely. property. Um, bro, it's E-L-Y. like five. It's. Wait, my bad. How much? How many acres was it? You showed it to me. <clears throat> Dude, it was like 500,000 bucks. It was like the size of Disneyland. No, bro. no. It's five times the size yeah, there of Disneyland. Go. What? And it's, it's in uh, Ely. And I was like, oh, dude, if you buy that, like, what if they build a highway through there? Yeah, they gotta pay you. They gotta pay yeah. you. Yeah, they, they won't pay you a lot, but no, they have to buy you out. No, they'll buy it through the property, and then once you build a highway, you know what you can build a stop, so you can hit up McDonald's, <laughs> you hit up gas station. I was like, he owned bro, that. you make money. Like, I'd start my own little city. <laughs> like you know, there's <laughs> like, all all the streets would be was white. It, how all much the was buildings. it though? Wasn't it like only like. Fifty thousand dollars, dude. It was like three hundred thousand. Okay. For five hundred acres. Sorry, that's how much it was. That's big. Five hundred acres, bro. That's what? What do you do with that, bro? Nothing. You sit on it. That's sit on land, you know. And you can go out there and build a little cabin and be like, bro, this is all my land. That's insane. (laughs) This is, dude. I would not want to go to the middle because if I got hurt or something, (laughs) I'd be fucked. So that's our next investment. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's the goal, man. Just buy stupid land because, like, I've heard multiple people they bought land forty years ago. Now all their land's selling for like eight million. Yeah. Oh, what the fuck? Did you hear that? What? Yeah. That was my phone. No, nah, like the Something the power was... went out. Really? You're still recording. Oh, still recording. Check, 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 check. Yeah, everything's recording. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I went on Google and I was trying to figure out how much eight hundred square meters was. So I typed in eight hundred square meters two. The first one is feet. The second one is uh uh miles, and the, the one of them was like cents. Sense what? Kinda oh, because because of the cost. Kind of come. Oh, of, yeah. Okay, that's how you sell. Hey, but congrats on that, man. Yeah, thank you, man. Well, hopefully, I yeah. can rent that place out and use yeah. it for Airbnb. <laughs> Hell yeah! So uh, now if we ever need to take a vacation, just hit you up. Yeah, you can do like a little container. Or, like no, no, it's basically cabins made out like of wood. Log, like uh, but, log cabins, but like f- special wood, so that you know, because it's very humid down there. Oh, really? It's in the middle of the jungle. Why don't you do the storage? You heard of those? It gets hot. Yeah, they insulate it. Like, no, but I see. It looks ugly. I think. No, I think they look opinion. tight. If you th- like, because you don't just leave the outside metal. You do like slat wood. Well, the problem is, it's 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 protected land because it's in the jungle. So they only let us build up until up like forty percent of the land we can only build on. Sixty percent has to be left alone. Wait, it's the jungle. It's the middle. Of the, yeah, it's the middle of the jungle. You gotta show me a photo. Yeah, I'll show you. That shit must yeah, look yeah. beautiful. It's beautiful, uh, but it, we're right next to uh, like where you can do tours. Are they like selling under, more land? Underground rivers. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you the info. Ooh, I might want to buy a piece of land. Yeah, dude. 10000 uh, 20000 That's a good investment. 50000 Yeah. Because they're, they're, they're investing a lot of money. Do they have $12,000 land? No. Huh. Mm, it's probably- I don't think so, no. It's probably all the same way you pay. Damn it. Yeah. It's still cheap. They, they can't take out You can loan. buy some land off his land. Hells Ooh. yeah, bro. <laughs> I'll buy you the land where I can't build on. <laughs> it's just trees. I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you the river. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, besides that, um, I'm still, you know, I'm trying to become a, uh, just, just have my own production company. Yeah. Basically. Are you, are you any plans on moving back to Vegas, bro? <laughs> Maybe, man. I'm thinking about it. I just like the, the whole being around creative people mm-hmm. is what I really, I, I, I miss. Well, you ain't yeah. gonna get that here, so don't move I back. Cra- no <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's, you know, being able to build off each other really helps with the content that you create. Surround yourself with amazing people. Yeah. That's really how it is. Yeah, basically. Yeah. That's kind of, that's why we got this house. We said it on every podcast episode, but like we, when you're around people who are creative and they, you see them working, it pushes you oh, to yeah. work harder. You know what I mean? To Definitely. do more. Cause it, it's almost like that 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 like friendly com- competition, but mm-hmm. it's not competition. It's more like I want to be like them, you know. And yeah. It kind of motivates you to be better. So it's yeah. And it's not really com- yeah, and it's also not really competition. If they grow, you grow. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Man. Exactly. Well, we we want to see you do a commercial for Nike, bro. So that was yeah. We'll, we'll have you back on the podcast when you when you do that. Yeah, I don't think I can beat the the recent one, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you uh do you guys have any? I gotta get going. 
Yeah, Pretty soon. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I gotta do a shoot. Okay. All right. Cool, man. Well, real okay, quick, where can people find you online and social media and all that stuff? Uh, people can find me online on Instagram, uh, Fernando G. Trueva. Fernando, Fernando, Fernando Gabriel Fernando Trueva. G. Trueva. Gabriel. <laughs> Gabriel. That's my real name, bro. Gabriela. <laughs> and uh, people can also find me on Twitch as True Fernie, T R U E F E R N I E. Um, yeah pretty much it gang gang you guys heard it here first thank you guys for tuning in and we'll catch you guys on the next morning dinner bye later every time i come in the kitchen you in the kitchen in the goddamn refrigerator i sure am hungry